Yeah. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Enhanced um, Annual Plan Workshop. Um, we are experiencing technical difficulties, so uh, we anticipate starting the meeting in about five minutes. So if you bear with us for that time, we'd appreciate it. Just turn the building on.
Sure. Uh, welcome back to the, the, the Enhanced um, Annual Plan Workshop. Um, sorry for the technical difficulty and, and the delay in starting. Um, today is obviously a, an open workshop and so no, decision, no binding decisions are made at a workshop. So today is the opportunity to discuss um, the points made in the presentation um, and that we've all um, really received and uh, without any further ado, um, I think we should get into it. And uh, Doug, you're going to start. Yep. Uh, thank, thank you, Deputy Mayor. I'll just quickly go through, if you go to that slide on timeline, just so I can read actual key points. So we're here today on the 20th of um, March. We're, uh, the, the key, key outcomes for today is just talk through a few rating issues and a, and a few sort of issues about how we fund particularly water and wastewater. Good chance uh, during the session for councillors just to raise any matters that they perhaps would like to make sure have actually been fully considered from their perspective. But we do need to start landing on um, an annual plan because although we've got a document pretty well developed, uh, it just we've now got to bring the numbers through into that document so that we can meet a 10th of April adoption for the long-term process. For those interested in the consultation process, that starts on the 12th of April. It goes through to the 13th of May. It's a, a sort of standard process we follow every year. Hearings, we've got program there for 22nd and 23rd of May, and then ultimately deliberations 5th and 6th of June with an adoption finally on the 28th of June to allow us to strike our rates. The, the timeline there. Um, so today, we're just going to look at a couple of key things. So the first one's going to be consultation topics, and I'll get John to work through that. I'm going to get Mike just to talk about solid waste and how we're going to sort of consult on that particular change. Lynn's then going to lead us through some issues with rating that we've talked about in a couple of workshops, and we're now bringing you what we, what, what staff we believe is a proposal that is definitely worth looking and considering, and we've got some information to work through there. And then we just want to spend a wee bit of time going through how we fund water and wastewater so we're clear of our legal obligations there, what that means for those closed accounts. We'll just touch base on grants. And then we'd like to have a session near the end for questions from councillors. And um, if hopeful, Mr Chairman, we'll hopefully get wound up by about five o'clock. But noting we have had a late start, we might just need to squeeze past that time. So we'll get John to talk about the consultation topics. We will pause at the end of that to make sure they are, from a councillor perspective, you're happy with what those topics mean for consultation. Thank you, Douglas. So um, this is a very, a very similar process to what we're talking about with the, the deferred bottom out, deferred long term plan. So there's three areas that we will be potentially consulting on with, you know, if, if, if it's sort of signed off from you guys, but we will be this, uh, discussing the, uh, the NZTA three-year transport programme. So what I mean by that is if, um, we'll go into more depth about it in a minute, but if um, NZTA don't give us the funding we expect, are we going ahead to do the the, the, the projects that's in that um, programme business case or not? Simple as that, really. Westport Water Resilience is around if we do the trunk main stage two in the next financial year, or if we defer that to next year in 25-26. And water rating for major users and multiple users at one rating unit. Um, Lynn is going to discuss that in, in depth. There's going to be quite a lot of discussion on that today. Um, it's around how we rate for water as a district. And obviously we have sent out some information to you guys the last, the last couple of days, um, and there will be some information provided on that. So the first one I want to discuss or, or looking at, and I know that on screen and for those of you who are watching um, in public, there, there's quite a lot of information on these screens. I have obviously sent this out two days ago, but um, pretty much long story short, we have put a, a programme business case forward to NZTA. Unfortunately, we won't get the budget or the, the finalised programme will not be given with us until around about August 2024 is the dates that's been provided to us. I had asked um, the, the road and staff yesterday evening if there was any sort of um, update in terms of providing that kind of final confirmation to us, but the, uh, it, there's, it's not, um, there's no update on it yet, and August is the expected date. 
if we think back to 2021, and I know a few of you guys weren't in council, um, we didn't pr receive the information until the long-term plan was adopted, and I think it's going to be a similar approach this year. So the two options that we have, um, and, and just, just remembering that in terms of the long-term plan process that we went through in terms of the early engagement, this was the community's number one outcome in terms of what they wanted to see. So um, the options that we're going to put up on the screen following is that Option one would be to reduce the programme to, um, to the Wakatai New Zealand Transport Agency approves funding. So what that means is if, depending on the level of investment that they, um, they fund, are we still willing to go ahead with what, the, what, with what Mike and his team's proposal was? Or alternatively, do we want to continue with the submitted programme and the council um, rate funds any difference and commits to higher rates for the next two or 18 years? Um, the quantum of the dollars and the rates increase is variable depending on what the funding shortfall is that NZTA provide. Does that make sense to everyone? Cool. Um, so matching the approved Wapitai funding, so obviously the advantage is that there will be no increase in the rate contribution and potentially there will be a saving on it. The disadvantages are that council may have to reduce the programme of works to match the funding. This obviously may have implications to the level of service delivery because ultimately it's doing nice work. It may increase the risk of the main assets being affected by an underinvestment, which could lead to further issues on our roads um, and impacts further issue on potential resilience and asset preservation. Roading was a community's number one priority in the pre-engagement um, or early engagement as we now call it. And of course we could fall further behind in terms of the inflationary um, impacts that they have. I think when we're discussing this sort of thing, um, it's also important to point out, I'd shared with you last night around the rates rise toolkit that came from local government New Zealand. So clearly our roading programme, the, the, the capital investment needed for that is much higher than it was in 2021. But just based on the, on the information I sent to you that was provided last week from LGNZ, I think it was, and, and please excuse me if I'm wrong, I think it was a 38% increase in, a, in, in the cost of roading in the last three years. So that gives you, an under, you guys an understanding of how, you know, how costly that is at the moment. Um, and it's the same around the country. And, and you know, when you look at other councils, they're, in, they're probably having similar conversations um, at the moment. So option two um, will be obviously the focus on asset preservation and the current levels of service. So as we know, Roden was the community's number one priority in the early engagement. Current levels of service delivery will be maintained. It reduces the main risk of the assets being affected by an underinvestment, which could lead to further issues. Of course, it helps us to preserve the assets, because remember, we're given different options or, or rationale had provided different options as, as to what we do. We had kind of hold option, we had a more kind of gold standard, as you'd call it. Um, and Mike, tell me what the other one was called, please, if you can remember. We had the four different options. Yeah, uh, so from essentially uh, best practice or unconstrained was option four of land. Uh, down to uh, effectively status quo, which is holding our expenditure levels, but uh, due to reasons such as escalation, that doesn't hold your uh, level of service. Um, that's what generates the gap. Um, and it helps to keep pace with inflation. The disadvantages of the council will need to uh, consider further increasing the rates portion. That would have an, a rates impact. There's, there's no, no getting away from that. It would impact further on affordability. It would impact another uh, non-roading project. So, for example, some of the other projects that we've got going on might have to have to stop if this choice was taken. And council locks in rates increases for the next two financial years as well, because we've got to remember it's a three-year programme. Um, and, of course, it's dependent on the final funding. So that is our roading, potential roading consultation topic. Does anyone have any questions on that? What's uh, the history of... of um getting what you asked for from what could say. You know? So, um, so we, we have been successful in recent times because of the evidence-based submissions, the work that we <coughs> behind uh, scenes to generate the business case. Uh, however, uh, it's always an oversubscribed fund nationally and, uh, and we never, I don't think anybody gets everything they want. And we also have signals already that some work categories, some elements of the program, such as cycling, uh, aren't going to be well supported. 
uh, across the country. Um, but I would say that the other thing in our favour is that on a national scale, uh, what will or ask for isn't um, significant. Um, I mean, it's significant, significant for us, um, but you know, across the country, it's not a large um, investment that we're typically speaking. Um, so we're always confident because of our homework and the evidence we put up. Um, but I think the real, if, if I can, you know, th this particular consultation topic, obviously the answer depends on, well, how much short are we? I mean, to give a reasonable answer to the question, shall we cover it ourselves or or, or accept the, the scope reduction? It depends. Is it 1%? Is it 50%? We won't know until... As John said, uh, confirmation in August uh, as far as what they approve. But I, I believe that the, the reason for this topic is to get a read from our community as to do we try our best or are we just going to accept the, the ruling of our funding partner? Um, and, and I expect that will be the nature of the responses is we should, you know, we should accept what we uh, what we, what's approved and we pay our share of that um, rather than, you know, we'll, we'll actually ante up and cover the gap because actually we won't know what the gap is until probably we're beyond the uh, answer. Would Jamie uh, raise your hand online? Um, you know, Jamie? Yeah, you've kind of answered part of the question, but I think the question about whether or not you would want to do it anyway is depending on on what they would take out. So if it was some of the softer things like um, cycling and, and maybe some pedestrian stuff or something, then, then yeah, you'd probably just accept a reduced program. But if it was, um, you know, the little longer Nui bridge improvement or whatever, something something key, then um, then you'd want to do it. So I, I, I guess, is there, do they normally cut these things as a, um, you know, look, we want you to find 20% less or, or do they pick on particular work streams? So uh, it's it's uh, really driven by the government of the day's policy statement. Um, so the overarching uh, priority setting, you might say, for for the overall transport program, uh, and that's where we're getting those early clues about it doesn't look like uh, multi-mode transport options are uh, highly favoured by this government. So uh, we think it's all going to be around the roads and stuff. We think that some of that. Uh, broader transport um, work categories won't necessarily be uh, supported, but I think that's that's the point. With it's the scale of any reduction, but also the work category type, uh, which will be unfortunately not known at the time of um, what we need to do here. So, so I think the purpose of the consultation topic was we could say we're not going to get particularly um, you know specific answers. It's more to raise awareness that there is this possibility that we won't get what we ask for. And so some commentary from the community about, well, OK, but as long as we get this might be um, what we obtain from the consultation process. Next point. Jay. I'm just going to highlight, too, that it is a shortfall. We're not, um, we're not getting the shortfall. We're paying the full amount. We're not getting three-quarters you know, subsidy. So this. The shortfall of going down rates is going to be quite significant. Mm. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Right. right. Um, Mike, how, what's the percentage of cycleways in the less favoured um, areas that you sort of feel that are going to be um, cut back on as in our projection of proposal? Mm. I can get the numbers for you. It's not no, just four part. Yeah, it's not significant. Yeah, under ten percent would be my estimate. Okay. Most of our bid is on the things that are, um, you know, conventional, if, if you like, in that roading space, bridges, uh, reseals, rehabs, um, line marking, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, on, on that basis, I sort of feel that we should stick to sort of option one. And say the like, we hopefully we'll get most of what we want. And offline, sometime I think I need to have a discussion on efficiencies, and hopefully we can make any shortcut with efficiencies. 
So I'd say go one, and um, we should be able to achieve what was proposed. My close to ask normal question. In terms of our potential rates, rating value, is the whole application been rated for or what you expect, what's an average expectation um, rated for? You know, like if you, you normally expect you 80% of what you request, is that what we're rating for or are we rating for 100% of what you've applied for? So I'll check with my financial colleagues, but our bids are uh, what we propose. You know, yeah. Would you like me to help, help that? Yeah, so what happens is we've assumed in the budgets that we've set here that we get 100% funding for the Karamea Special Purpose Road, and we've assumed that we get 75% funding. So if, for example, there's a million dollars to spend in one year on this on the local roads, um, we've assumed that the, the funder will give us 70, 750, and we need to find 250,000. So what this question's asking is, if we don't get that whole 750 yeah. from yeah. the funder, we, are we prepared to make up the difference, which could be substantial, which is what John was mentioning up here, earlier. Yeah, yeah. So what? No, I sort of understood that. Uh, yeah. But, but I'm saying, when we, you know, you always say it's oversubscribed, and so we've applied for 10 million, but we know we're not going to get 10 million. So have we rated for that 10 million? Yes, we have. Yes, so we have rated for the... The, the the wish list rather than yeah yeah okay yeah, and and just just remembering that when, when we, we brought it in the long term plan we brought the kind of options through rationale that done the, the work for us but that was pretty much the the hold you know it wasn't the gold plated roads it was just a case of yeah. maintaining a level of service yeah, yeah. but yeah it's a hundred percent in the budget thank you just for clarity so the proposal we put forward is for seventy five percent funding and that's what we were told previously and I thought it been fairly well indicated that we're going to get 75 percent again so I consider that sort of a fair call. Correct so the agency has approved two things that approved our farm out for 75 percent in the next uh, three years and have also uh, committed to the 100 percent funding on the SPR mm -hmm. for the next three years so um, so both of those things, um, I'm going to say, are locked in. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not in, in. They're not up for uh, uh, debate. What is to be tested is essentially the uh, the amount on each of those two parts, the local road part and the SPR, and uh, and that's the funders' um, decision process to come. And then the question to the consultation topic is: What if it's not all that we ask for? And this is the well, it depends. What how much short is it? In what category is it? Is it all out of SPR or is it all out of local road or bits and bobs? Um, and uh, you know, I think I think it's going to be a difficult question for our community to specifically respond to. But we feel there's value in getting a, a response because perhaps we'll get some signals about well, as long as you don't touch this. I, I think as well to add to, to Mike's point then. Thank you. Um, so just to carry on from sorry, the, on. so therefore you've applied um, for both sector portions, but when you get your applied back and say it's like the SPR, you've got X amount and the FAR, you've got X amount. Yes, yes. It's so, true. so it's not as though hmm. you've got to try and decide for it yourself. It's quite clear cut as to how much you've got to spend. So therefore, the, I, don't, I don't see the issues. But, but this is we're clear, there's three things though, isn't there? We've got a higher subsidy rate, that's locked in. We're clear on 100% SPR, that's locked in. What we're putting into our budgets is the higher workload level, and that's the most, that's got an increased rating movement. So at the moment, we're just saying, are we gonna, are we happy to support that through to the next stage? If the answer is yes, then that'll be one of the consultation items, because if it gets pulled from us in August, then we've got a wee bit of a challenge because we may have struck our rates. Mm -hmm. I expect we've struck our rates, if you're not may have. So um, timing is a pain. <clears throat> it really is. But then we'll have a debate about what do we do with our share if we have struck the rates. Cool. So to carry on from that, is it because it's a new government or why do Waka Katahi wait till August after everyone, every council's done their annual plans? Why is it not before? 
some councils will probably still be going through a long-term plan because they have an extension until the end of September. So that might have been the thinking by some, but councils like us, <coughs> following the enhanced annual plan, we're, we're, we're not at all advantaged here. So. But is this normal for Waka Katai? No, no. Normally, normally they're June, and it fits in with the council making its own decisions on budget. So this is unusual. There is one thing in a government paper when they put out about transport about three weeks ago. They did talk about lifting local road funding, but no understanding what that meant. So it could just be that, um, in our case, the 72 and 75 has been confirmed. That type of subject change. Yeah. Yes. I don't know that we can't make any decisions here but we have talked about this in the past and sort of steer towards the hold and um, really it's just for the pub public now to have their say and that's, I suppose, yeah, that's the next steps really. Um, so it'd be in interesting to see what they come back with with um, the amount of rates that we're putting forward, <laughs> rate, rate, rate rises, they might change their minds on um, that being the highest topic. <laughs> <laughs> Again, anything we put off today yeah, is going to cost twice as much tomorrow anyway. So maybe if it's a, some cycling or whatever, fine. But yeah. anything else, we're only going to cost us twice as much tomorrow. Right? Yeah. I think. Well, I mean, I don't. I think everyone agree with that. I just think what you're saying is that when they look at a number, a rating number, yeah. um, all that, of a sudden that, rating won't be that. All, all of a sudden, people, people yeah. will make People will have to make decisions. Yeah. But but that's what the consultation is for. To see, see where the appetite is. Obviously, it, it seems like there is an appetite for and I, and I, that consultation. For sure. I think that's absolutely right, but I also think that goes back to, to Douglas's point. You know, we're going to talk about rates in a, in a little, you know, a little bit, and that's it. Would be quite good for us as staff today if that if you know the numbers are, are not what you know if it's not going to land in that in a couple of weeks' time, it'd be quite good. Not no decisions as we spoke about last night, but to get a bit of guidance to say what we would, would ideally get here so that we can know from a finance perspective if there's a way we can do that. Thank you. I just quickly ask um what is what's the scenario if we if we went for the lower so we agree we're not funding it for rates and then the agency does cut the package. Like, is there a funding option that comes back to council for us to loan fund it during the year? Like, like literally, it's just a decision of council. If, 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 we, if they end up cutting something that we think, actually, hell, that's really something we want to do, um, what's the alternative funding options that would allow that work to carry on besides striking the rate? Yeah, that would be that would be the option if the funders do not come up come to the party and fund everything. There would only yeah. be the option of loan funding or finding another external revenue source, which I suspect is highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've also got the other side of the coin. What if we do strike the rates and go ahead with this higher program and they come through in August and cut it? And we maybe have overrated. Um, as we know in the slides that are in here, I think it's about 3.6% that the roading contributes to the um, total rates increase. So we may have actually overstruck by accident, if that makes sense. Mm. So there's also that discussion about what to do with that surplus there, and where should that be? Should that be earmarked for future years or for something else that was foregone in order to make this rates palatable? Yeah. So you've sort of got two sides of the coin there, but I think me, Jamie, you step would be the only Thank reasonable you. option at this point. Thanks. Thank you. I mean, we're not wizards. We haven't got a crystal ball. We haven't really have the correct information yet. So I think we just have to have some solid options, um, try and make the sensiblest decisions and just kind of wait her out. I mean, what, what else can we do? I, I'm just a bit lost there. Yeah. I think there is a timing. There is a timing issue, but we can't do much about that. No. Yeah, ideally we'd have the information in May or June before before we adopt, but it's just that I think, as, as the, the team have told me in the last couple of days, I just think the chances of that coming through before June is extremely unlikely. Hey, Rosalind, last, last right. Okay, well, clearly there's got to be a cut in that whole um, um, operating budget, and the idea that it was sort of 10% thereabouts of funding applied for that we don't think we're going to get. So why in the heck are we going to go and rate for something that we don't really think we're going to get? That's only a piece of yeah, I know. Well, but if it's a ballpark and that's what's normal, um, well, as Lynn said, we do accidentally overrate um, because it's an assumption. 
But if we've got this assumption that it's po possibly 10% that we're not going to get funded through what we've already applied for, um, surely that could be an area that we're just sort of saying, right, 10% of what we've applied for, we don't rate for, of our portion mm. of that 10%. But it's new government, it could be 50%. Yeah. Well, that's a start. No, yeah, I, I mean, I think you're the same, doesn't it? Yes, that might be the case, but then it does allow other things to happen. I think that's really what you're saying. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just so we're clear on that, if we end up having rated for something that another partner's there, not put their funding in, then we have an amount of money to consider what we do with it. And that would be the debate at the time. Yeah, other options could be suddenly be a priority for funding or you might want to hold it for roading, or you might want to not spend it at all. There'll be some options to consider in that arrangement. So I think we conclude, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I think, we... no, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't see Annalise's hand up and oh, it'd be rude for yeah. a youth yeah. member. So, Annalise. I think in previous discussions, Councillor Nagon mentioned, you know, we're happy to top, top up in this circumstance. Look at Katahi will look back and say, oh, well, Bola region, we're, you know, roading was really important. They were happy to top it up. Maybe they will be again. So I'm in support of seeing what we're given. And if the government can't fund something that's essential to our district, it's really a look at the government, whether they can provide for citizens, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's hard to know until they decide even how they're going to do it. It's a percentage rate or a, or a particular project based reduction, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's, that goes back, I guess, to an uncertainty that we've discussed quite a lot um, recently. But um, I, I should have pointed out at the start of the meeting as well, we've got a, a whiteboard up here. Um, and if there's any questions that we can't answer today, we'll take them away and I'll send them out um, by early next week so that everyone's got the answers. Well, I think we're on to water then. Yeah, so the next one um, is Westport Water Resilience. Mike, can you, do you want to talk through this one or do you want me to take this one for you? Uh, thanks, John. Um, very simply, we, we contemplated Westport Water, and it's always been one of our greatest uh, risks from a district's point of view, really because of the number of people that are served off that supply just on that basis alone. Uh, and I think we're all well aware of the challenges we've had. Um, over the years. So uh, one of the outstanding pieces of work to, uh, to manage risk is uh, what we call the stage two trunk main. That's the last roughly kilometre of, um, of Main's pipe uh, from McKenna Road roughly uh, into Queen Street. It's been designed, um, it's been relatively um, well planned, I would say, uh, to be ready for the 24, 25 financial year to actually deliver it. Uh, it's roughly $3 million, uh, and that's what's presented in the budgets and, and captured. When we were looking at it from an LTP perspective a few months ago, uh, we really considered that to be um, a must have. It's been deferred at least uh, one or two campaign cycles since. Um, uh, Really, since, since <coughs> February 22, then. Two years ago. Yeah, well, well, well it's 100 years old or so. Yeah. Uh, Two so, years ago, it was in the budget. Yes. Nine years ago. So, that particular piece of work has been sitting there to be done, and we feel it's ready, it, it, it is ready to go. Uh, but when we're looking at it from an LTP perspective and the broader risk profile of Westport Water, there were some other um, projects and improvements that were identified, including around the ponds. Uh, clarification of the raw water and then further upstream and looking at um, additional sources uh, so called the North Branch or the Paralady Headwaters to actually bring that um, supply in because that would uh, attend to other risk factors such as uh, low rainfall, the drought circumstance we had a, a second stream to you by. Um, and they were set out in the LTP. Um, because I was looking at a multi-year um, investment program to manage the risk. Now that we've sort of um, come back to a, an outstanding plan, we've taken those other projects, um, obviously, off the radar, and we're now just looking at what we have planned for 24-25, which is the trunk main project. What the consultation question is proposed to seek affirmation of from the community is, yes, go ahead and do it. More or less, it's as simple as that. Is this a, a yes/no decision? Um, 
It's been brought up today, or particularly what I'd like to raise is, does the council feel that it even needs that level of consultation? And that's a question around significance. It's a question around risk. Um, but I do pose it that whilst we're saying in the, in the current wording that it is a community, do you want this to happen or not? Um, I guess it's a reasonable thing to start off with. Is, is, does council see that that's even necessary? If it's been highlighted as a critical risk, which it has, uh, of a project that's ready to go, which it is, um, is it is it just because of its value? Is, is it because of um, you know the impact to rates that council feel actually, even though it's a high risk, you know, or a risk um, control measure, we must consult on it anyway because it's a three million dollar project. So I'll start off with that line of inquiry and. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add one thing to, to Mike's point. Um, I think it's important for us to note as well, and, and, and certainly for the public out there, that um, in terms of the funding of, of this project, it won't actually have ma a, a big difference on the rates number for this year. It will be more taken into next year's um, funding. So in terms of if the, if the option was to not do it in 2024, 2025, actually the impact it has on rates is minimal because of the way that the loan funding would be taken out, because it would fall into next year's um, loan funding category, just so everyone knows and we've got, it's definitely clear for everyone's perspective on the funding. Okay, Jack. Uh, that's only pushing about a year though, so it's still got the relative um, implications. If we did it, if we put it out to um, 25, 26, it just pushes that funding out to the bottom here for the rate. But, but I, I think to be clear though, <clears throat> if people say, no, we don't want to do it in 24, 25, they're not going to see a rates reduction from that decision. It will just, as you say, push it out further yeah. for that to occur. The one thing, if we, if we do put out public, is what's um, the inflationary pressures like? If a prior guys have been much worse, it could be that the inflation pressure on piping costs is quite significantly higher than maybe just doing groundwork. So... so I think if you're giving people a choice, we need to say what's the implications, what the inflationary expectations that might be more the dollar values could be more than just anyways. If nine out of ten of the public came back and said they didn't want the project to go ahead at this time, would we still do it? That's a question to the council. Would we How still we do, do it? Well, so what's the point in asking them what they want? Yeah, I'm not sure why we need to do that. Those critical words, why we we're gonna do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. I'm sort of with Annalise, I think if it's been identified as critical work, a critical piece of work. One, one question I could ask is, can we do half the and half the And I guess we can, but um, I think what Joe's saying is relevant too. You know, if we delay more, it costs more. You know, the sooner you start, the sooner you finish, and, the, and you, know, you reduce actual cost. And I think if, if we're saying that actually our job is, is health and safety and make sure that we have, you know, um, clean water, you know, I think we would be almost negligent not to do it. Oh, sorry, Jamie, no, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you've actually just said what I was going to say. I, I don't think we should need to consult on it. I think this is um, business as usual for us. Um, well, it's not business as usual, but it's stuff that we have to do. Um, I, I think it's a Clayton's choice for the community. I don't know what they would get out of consulting from my view i don't think we should consult it should just be overtly in the budget it is what it is what it is we're spending it for the reasons we're spending it um it's our responsibility and i think people expect us to to do that um really otherwise what are you asking people that whether they want to take the risk of having no water um you know it's not really a, a question to ask i don't think yeah I, I agree. Tony. yeah critical is critical <laughs> and um obviously already know about it, it's already been discussed, it's already been talked talk about, um, we're really confident with it, but obviously we can't make decisions now, but it's already been talked about, so yeah, I'm leaning towards not sure. Um, well, I, I'm the complete opposite. I think $3 million is substantial and we're here to keep our community informed. And I think people need to be informed that's what we're doing. Pointed out clearly that it's not going to have an impact, a minimal impact on rates this year, because we keep saying critical, and as I've mentioned before, 
10 years ago was on the um, books to be done and probably needed, probably not critical at that point. New Council came in and they took it out because of a great um, implication at that time. So here we are, 19 years later, so we're still discussing that right, if it's critical, if it's in there, if it's going to have minimal cost next year. And when you look at the rate for the following year, um, demand is less. I think let people know what we're doing and it's consultation, keeping them informed. And um, if it's going to go into the 25, 26 year, it's going to have, you know, I'll just bring the rates up. That bit, but yeah, it won't be deemed to be having a big impact issue, but it's information. Sure. Yeah, I totally agree with the community needs to be informed, but, but information and consultation doesn't have to be the same. Well, I mean, it's all part of consultation. Well, look, you, you can put it out there about what needs to be done, but again, we're putting off, as Mike says, about the inlets and all the rest of it that probably needs looking at in years to come, and again. We just can't be putting it all off because it's all going to bite us anyway. So, yeah, we'll inform people, but I don't see that having to be consulted on this. Yeah, just two things. So, um, first thing, has this already been consulted on in the long term plan? No, it hasn't been. The long term plan we thought that the funds that were proposed at that time were going to get all the way to town. Right. So there was some external funding provided for the trunk main, and this is an additional piece. Okay, so, so this, this concept is, hasn't been consulted on before? The concept was that there was going to be some external funding to become the top of the hill into town. And then there was a shortfall, and this is the final part of that. So it actually said, proposed that there'd be external funding to meet the majority of the cost okay. on this, and that actually would be negligible. Okay. I think there has been a paper the council brought about it a couple of years ago. I could well be wrong, you know. I, I think Mike would probably be the one to answer it. I'm sure there has been a paper at council that discusses the, the 3.15 million, I'm sure. Okay. And then, so, second, going on from that, Rosalie, you talked about um, consultation with the public. I totally agree. But do you think it's more us telling them this is really important or asking them, is this really important? Telling them and explaining. Telling them. So that's cost. not really like No, that. but it's still consulting with the way we're communicating. And because if we remember, and so through the yeah. chief, um, that this was the big angst going back in May, that all of a sudden we had another $3 million on our books that we hadn't consulted on. And um, it was agreed that we would put it in a long term plan to consult on. So now we're saying we're not going to consult on it, it's critical, we've got to do it. Um, but back in May, that's the decision. Well, that was the argument with some people, Colin, Graham, and myself, is that there was $3 million, which is a substantial amount of money that we're just going to go ahead and do. I feel we have to be careful, like, are we consulting or are we communicating? Because communicating. if we're consulting, this is not a genuine consultant, no. we're saying this is what's happening. So we, I think it's fine to communicate, but it's not consulting. You know, it's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. So I actually read about that a bit because I, I would have, I just proposed <coughs> there was consultation on this because it was in the long term plan. So I'm not, I'm not saying full consultation on it, but I definitely support um, information on it and explanation around the, the critical part and ex explanation around um, the expectations that it was put previously and what we have now. And lots of them that understand. Could I make a yes. suggestion to maybe help us move through? Because I know yeah. we've a lot to get through. And yeah. Um, yeah. In our annual plan document, we have our key issues for consultation up front. Yeah. And then we have this, uh, the next page is a supporting page which talks about other really important issues. So, and people may wish to make a comment on those and they get taken, that gets taken into account. So, do you see this more as falling on that secondary page? Yeah. Oh, that sort of be a sense of where we are. Yes. Or is there a sense that, yeah, this, I guess that's what we're asking. Yeah. That would help us finish the document. As we know, we're looking to sort of finish it in about a week. I, I mean, I think as it's yeah. written now, if we consult, 
you're going to, the likelihood is you're going to get more people against it than for it. But then, in reality, we need to do it. So, and, 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 and where's, where's the gain in that in terms of community? You know, we've got a role in the community to, to provide health and safe water. And also, there's new water regulations that maybe we weren't pasting years ago, um, which put a lot more onus on us to do the right thing. So um, I, I agree. I think we all agree that we need to communicate and say what we're doing and why. I think that's a no-brainer. But, but I don't think we need to say, do you want it or don't you want it? No, so Mr Chairman, the conclusion is it won't be in our major decision list. It will be there as an item we're doing. You can welcome that comment, but it won't be one of our major decisions. We're seeking direct feedback. Yeah, 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 that's right. Cool. Okay, cool. Thank okay. you very much. All right, so did carry on. Thank you very much. Um, Lynn, you want to take this one? Do you want me to talk to you? Because I know you've got quite a big section on this. Well, I on. think they'd like to hear you for a start, wouldn't they? Ah, yes, okay. I can do yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good point. So, yeah, the, the, this is around also multi users and major user uh, water rating consultation. So, I think this is quite this is probably the the most predominant one because you know there's a lot of, a lot of information that's provided and it's going to have you know um I think it will you know certainly will impact the community but it could have it will certainly have some positive could have some positive things in terms of rates moving forward. So the current practice and policy for water and wastewater rates has been before council for review as we all know. Um, it's, it was recommended, and certainly um, Douglas is, is one that we we're looking at to revise the multi-resident, multi-commercial differentials. Um, the revision considered that separately. Um, just I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see. Several so user inhabited um, part of the rating um, unit application of charges using quotable value data. So obviously, what the, the advantages that could be that it's a clear, compliant policy. I think that's probably one of the key things we need to make sure it's compliant, but also that it's a kind of one one policy for everything. The policy application is driven from the external value of data. The rates collection, uh, collection is impartial and equi equitable and the amount collected benefits, um, there's benefits to all ratepayers on it. Obviously, the, the disadvantages come with that. Um, it could be the understanding of the policy may be, um, you know, it's quite difficult to understand if you've not read into it in great detail. We're looking at a policy application of using the 80-20 80, 80, rule. Um, the, the rate collection changes may, uh, and the perception it might be, you know, different to what we're actually trying to achieve. And the amount, the amount collected burden on individual rate payers. So obviously, if we've got multi-unit ratings, the individual rate payer will potentially have to pay, will have to pay more. So that's kind of what the, the consultation so will be. If we stay there, I can carry on if it's... Yes, and I'm, we've got different uh, documents on it as well. So if you want to just tell me what to load up. I will, I will. Thank you very much for that intro. So this is an area, I can't believe we're talking rates, uh, rates consultation again. This has been an area that's been looked at. So the main point that John's mentioned there up front is that this has been something that has been in front of council for a long number of years uh, around rates review requirement. But there's actually been some further documentation shared with you over the last couple of years, which is information to say, what we're trying to really look at here is clearly aligning our rates policy just for water and sewer, clearly aligning that policy more closely to the Rating Act requirements. Now, the Rating Act talks about how you can actually decide which group of ratepayers pays the rate. And it also talks really clearly about how you actually apply that rate and how you decide who gets charged for it. And if you look at our existing policy, and I know we sent it out to you just for a glance over, you'll see that there's multiple tables and schedules and all sorts of interpretations which are required. And actually each of our communities are treated very differently at present. For example, looking at Punakaiki is a very comprehensive schedule there for that ratepayer group, which actually says uh, we're going to 50% rate or charge each um, available connection for that group of ratepayers. I mean, that is not the case for somebody in Wamangaroa or Westport, for example. We also have a schedule on that Punakaiki list which shows very, very detailed breakdowns, breaking down to which actual ratepayer will pay X, Y, and Z. And it's very, very hard for anyone to just pick that policy up and apply it consistently. So what we're talking about here with this is trying to make sure that the policy is more clear and compliant 
However, the disadvantages, as you spoke about, John, is that the understanding throughout the community may not be in favour. Because right now we've got a system that says if you have one section of land and you have two separately used and inhabitable parts to that, whether it be maybe a house and a, let's say, two houses, just two houses on one section, and you've got one pipe in, you are going to only pay one water rate. However, um, Douglas has given an example. What if you own the ha one house here on one title and the house next door, you pay one each? Why should it be that if you have two houses on one section, you only pay one? So that's the question that we've got. So the, well, the policy for us is to say, if you've got a separately used and inhabited portion, how about we apply one for each of those? So that's sort of a question for you to, um, to talk to me about and talk to each other and each of us here about that fundamental change in the policy because it's got some really big benefits for clarity. It's got some really good benefits to make sure the rates collection becomes more streamlined and equitable. However, it's got those downsides as well. You can all imagine some scenario where they might have a family member in a flat out the back. How are they going to feel about this? Yeah. So any questions about what we're trying to change with the policy or anything you'd like to discuss? We are going to, we are going to go into this in more detail later on when we talk through potential rates differences and things like that. Mm. We've got some numbers for you we can talk about. I don't want to I just want to just look, look at the top level, we'll, like talk about the actual policy idea and just see what you are. Just a clarity from the start. This applies to reticulated schemes only, not to the whole district as such. Yes. Right. Okay. And what about when you have contiguous sections? Um, I, I fully agree with what you're saying, Lynn, but um, you have a house here and a section which is extended as of use of the house because you have two small sections. Um, would you deem that as rateable? Uh, shall I draw? Is that all right? Yeah. Making sure it's a white one. Oh, so I'm I'm tired. Tired. You, you, sometimes you've got two titles yeah. together, which a very small one titles. Yeah. So at, at present, the Rating Act has a section in it that says if this is if you own this section and this one and you use them for the same purpose because this is your yard and whatnot, that is one separately used and inhabited portion. Right. That would apply have one uniform and junior yeah. charge on it, and it would therefore have one water and one sewer. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah. one. So but then following through, if there's an empty section. Um, that some of, it's a vacant section, as you say, in here, that will be charged that's owned by somebody else. Yes, the proposal in this, at this point is yes, a vacant section would have, uh, if it's available for use, a half charge. Yep. District, yep. District wide for those that have got availability of service. So Cullamand does not have a municipal water supply, so it wouldn't be charged. Yet. And likewise, if somebody chooses, that the water goes past their place that they don't want it on an tank water, they will be charged for the goes past. 50%. As an availability charge. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Is that quite a common? Yep. Charge? The um this is just a repeat with that contiguous rating applies to general rates. What well, we're talking about are used habitable portions. And yes, the, the law expects that if the pipe go past, goes past, it's a half charge. Full charge to be connected. There's a bit about capital and how you connect. That's a separate issue. This is the rating for the council's costs. So just to clarify, though, it's a bit confusing the different messages we're getting here. Under the target rates, that scenario up there would just be one connection. One separately one used item there. Yep. Um, and just a bit of clarity too. So when we're talking about having two SUIPs there, to qualify for that, does it have to have a kitchen or a bathroom? Like what's what is the uh, this is just to clarify for the public, what is a um, unit? Is it separate from just like a little sleep out that you just bedroom? Great what question. Is a, so mm. yeah. So the um the, the answer there doesn't in lot doesn't actually need to live at this table or at a council a council workers' table to decide. 
because what happens is we provided data from QV quotable value. They actually do the assessments and have information in the database that tells us what are the units of use they call it. It's a special field, getting technical now into the database. This units of use is it tells us how many separate units and inhabited portions are on each rating unit. So if um, QV have assessed it in the database that you've got two units of use, you would have two separately used and have portions. And they do the assessment based on the criteria, which are then based on the Office of the Auditor General requirements and the Valuation Act. So there's quite a lot of actual... The Office of Valuation Act. Thank you, yeah. Just to clarify that too, isn't that also updated by the information that comes from building consent? So does the council also provide some of that information that goes to them? It's a, it's a, circular, um, it's a circular type of information flow because that actually gets sent through uh, when it's shared with LINS data that's imported back to council, so it goes around in a circle. So what, what we would not want to have and we do not encourage in any way, is for too much interpretation to be put over the top where it starts to become woolly. I think that's where you see the, the, the rating policy we have right now has got lots of ifs and buts, and we'll add this one in, we actually name the, the rating unit, and then this one's in and that one's out, and it starts to become blurred. That's why we talk about the history of the rates. So what we're saying is, um, let's use what other councils do. We've had a look at those. Let's see um, what other councils are doing and how they actually apply this using just those bare bone um, parts of the law and making sure we rely on QV because we pay them to do that work for us. They actually, they, they're provided not just to do an annual revaluation of the rates, which comes up every, every three years for the rates. They actually do the work to, with these queries, they go out and check something and update the database and feed it back through to us. So we should have relying on this. When we're, water's increasing so much, and we're looking at the projections maybe over the next 10 years, and when we consider maybe like commercial and that, we're looking at percentage increase all the time. So it basically means the ones that are paying a lot are increasingly paying more and more. Um, given us a target of rating and pay a flat amount on that, is there a look at a fear of distribution over the, the period of time? Yeah. Shall we have a look at that? No. I think, I think we'll, we'll, why don't we jump to the examples? Because we, um, and even, I don't know, Lynn, whether you can just give a little bit of clarity on, on Councillor Joe's question there about a kitchen, bathroom thing, what we would expect to see. Yeah, there is, for the, the QB data for a separate use, we have to we have everything that's available for it to be used independently, so it's a standalone unit. So if it's got a kitchen, but no bathroom, it wouldn't meet that criteria. Is our understanding? Commercial would have a different aspect, though, to it. Commercial has a different aspect. We're talking but predominantly this is going to impact the residential sector because the units of use are already in for the oh, it was the very last one that we did. I think it was water rates. Water rates that one? More on the estimate. Estimate example. That's one. No, that's the overarching one. We want to go to the property by property one, don't you? Rates with new, rates with new policy. The very last yeah, one I'll just, I'll just, yeah, yeah, why don't we just talk to how many we think extra are there to be the first thing to do? Okay. You can take that if you want to. No, I could, could I point to things? Yeah. Possibly. Just resume share if you can. Just to, to the public. See, talk it says resume share. I need to share again. Oh, that on there? That's it. Oh, well. Stop oh, sure. 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 I'll let you leave you in charge of the mouse. Oh, please do. Share screen, and that's this one, isn't it? Yep. Right. Yes, it is. There we go. Okay. So then just, just talk to how many we think we've found before we get down to specific. Yeah, okay. So we've done some, some looking through the data we've got, which is how we've struck the rates based on the division before, yeah? And then we've looked and said, if we did change the policy, how much change would there be and what the impact be for the um, for the for the rates for that year. And we've done a, a reasonably conservative estimate because we understand there's some more information that needs to be looked through. We don't want to, to give you high numbers here, but it looks like we could get somewhere in the order of um, get the detail from here. Um, 
I'll give you some reasonable numbers there. Um, there we go. Bear with me. We look, it looks like we could get somewhere in the order of 270,000 additional for water, around about 190,000 more in the sewer side of things. And that's more dollars coming in because the application of the rates would be spread through. What that then carries on from is a discussion that Douglas will be involved in as well, which is a discussion about what do we do with the extra funds that are available. So say that was the case, um, that means that we could actually make a saving in some potential saving for a, say, reefed in ratepayer may not need to pay quite as much as expected. They may be able to have a reduction in water of around $100 and for water and for their sewer, they may be able to get a reduction of around about $80. So the real saving to a real ratepayer in their hand is $180 per annum if they're a connected rate payer and their supplies. So, okay. um, so you've picked out Reefton, so that makes me assume that within the targeted area of each of those areas, it's only that targeted area will benefit by the number of, yeah. so that's until okay. this week, decide to club the whole lot but just um yeah for one angle lower um it should be reasonable there because at the moment where water goes past the property are not rated that's correct however there's multi-rating that's used that would need to be reapplied and the rate payer base isn't large no it's so a numbers game we'll have a little yeah and have little impact really minimal for that rate cut uh, in Westport because we've got paper in place. It's a good example, it's a good example of this. Yeah, yep. mm. So that would have a good impact. Yeah. Yes, and we've looked at the numbers and scheme by scheme and done some um, good assessment there. And really, it only lands just in our major schemes, which is reefed in and um, Westport, that it actually does have a major impact. And that's where the two rate power groups are. That's it's interesting in that your Westport rate payers are some of you, they're your highest rate payers residentially, and so a potential re spread of the rates, which means we may rate somebody one more rate each for water and sewer, it's quite substantial because those numbers are high. If you look at the actual targeted rates, they're in the thousand plus mark, and then, yeah, it could be a reasonable saving for them. But, you know, you've got a highlighted there. Um, well, that's reefed in the yeah, so long term of one and that's just out of question $1,600 um, for a water rate that I read on here. I can't, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. but so have you done the figures on clubbing? What benefit it would be to club all the water and sewage rates? Yeah, we, 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 we have, um, and this, I suppose, is something we do just want to talk through today. So the first one is Lynn's introduced is changing the, the basis of rating for multi-residential and commercial, uh, sorry, major users category. The second thing is the half rating. Now, we, we're sort of in a bit of a dilemma. We think that's probably got a bit of a challenge for people who particularly have got to pay more to get their head around, those who will get a reduction. That they actually won't see a reduction in their hand because what we're saying is we wouldn't lift the rate that much, but we can pull it back a bit there. So there is a percentage saving, and then there's some people on half charges who will pay more. The third bit, and I suppose this is the bit we do want to have a bit of think about, is if we do go to a district-wide rate, then there are obviously winners and losers because some are below and some are above. It's just, do we think there's adequate clarity to introduce those three things? So you imagine if you're in Westport, and you're, um, say, a multi, multi-residential, multi you're going to find I'm actually paying more, and then you might have some uh, titles that don't uh, are not paying now but have a, an availability, less likely in Westport, to be fair. You're going to pay on that, and then we're going to overlay it with the district-wide rate. And I suppose it's just, are those three things going to be easy to explain? Yes, we benefit for smaller schemes, or is that an issue for the next long-term plan process to consider? Because um, we've also got the general rate differential sitting out there, which is not perhaps so problematic, but it's just 
highly administratively challenging to keep that going. But so I suppose that's part of the discussion. The third bit, because explaining this to people won't be easy because everyone is like, well, there's a group who will be consistent, but there'll be different nuances for a lot of right person. So what happens if um, Mokanui's water gets dis disestablished? Yeah. My understanding would be if there's a, a scheme is disestablished at the end of that rating year, there'd be no further rates mm. that are struck. Remembering that rates are struck yeah. as of the 1st of July in any rating year, and because there are the target rates in this, this way, if they're set, they're set. So you'd want to cut pipes off and dig it up on the 30th of June, if that was the case, in order to maximise what you're doing. But uh, this is, would be, yep, they would not be required to be set for future years. And of course, that would require a different consultation completely with an SCP in terms of the, to for more, the more community residents. Jamie? Yeah, um, what is the effect on like some motels where they're all self contained effectively? Most of them got kitchens and bathrooms. Well, how is that being handled? Really? In, in this it's on my list to make sure you have it, so you, I'm glad you asked that, because what we've got is uh, a draft policy at present that talks about um, motels and units like that that have a lot of um, additional units in one group. And the proposal is that for anyone in that situation that they would have be charged one, one connection, but have a water meter, so that they actually are metered for the water use. Of course, we can't meter um, the wastewater, so a proposal would be, would be to actually uh, charge one wastewater and also a quarter charge per pan, so have a pan tax. And interest, <laughs> interestingly enough, this is um, so, uh, lots of discussion being had about how this could work, about looking at other councils these are, um, we've looked at some other council suggestions to see to try and get equity and so forth. Because what, for example, if you've got a motel unit with 20 separately used and inhabited room portions, that's 20 rooms plus your own residence, I suppose. There's 21. And so I guess what those other councils have done is to, to, to try and ensure that there, that there's not 21 charges for water and sewer at those, those high rates that they're actually uh, negated by applying a pan tax in that case. Yeah. You'd still have six like, going by. It's still a lot, though, wouldn't it? It would be. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, so I think that's, that's quite awkward when you have accommodation because they often see rates for like a motor camp. Um, historically, it's been a 25% occupancy rate, whereas a motel around the country can be anything from 45 to like. 75% occupancy rate. So if you did it by unit, it's not really being fair on them because they're going to be begging for a certain portion of the time. So yes, it's a difficult thing to keep to um, apply. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
because when the annual plan goes out, we need to make sure we've got something concrete that people can have good feedback on. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we have to solve it today, but it'd be really nice to see if you've got questions so we can actually draft it in. And we don't have to say that's absolutely it, but we do need to get guidance because then it helps us lock down some of the numbers that we're talking about and helps inform decision-making there around the finance and the application of additional correct revenues. Yes, I'd definitely be in favour of you going, you know, comparing it with other councils policies, particularly like councils to us, you know, yes. rural councils that will have maybe worked out some of the complexities through their process. Because I mean we're not Christchurch, are we? No. Yeah, I'd be I'd be in favour of having a consistent system policy that, that is treated consistently. So if there are multi-dwellings on a property, each of them, if those dwellings is using stuff, then each of those dwellings should pay for that stuff. Mm -hmm. But would it be normal to have a percentage of what the um, rate is, or is it a per pen as in a dollar rate rather than a percentage? Because it just sounds you know, fairly expensive you know, a quarter of the rate opposed to X amount of dollars for per pen. Has to be so a quarter quarter of the wastewater rate for that. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. there's only these four pans and you've got double the rate. And it wouldn't be a big motel to have double the rate. No. So and that's why I say is that therefore a that's why I said before a quarter of each number above four. No, as Lynn says before, yeah. if you got yeah. if there was twenty-one in the motel, then you'd be equivalently part of the six properties. Yeah. Wasteful yeah. quarter. Yeah. So for forty pay one, right? Is that what you're saying, isn't it? It'd be forty pay one. Yeah. So if there was twenty-one, you'd there'd, there'd be five and one. Five and quarter. <laughs> so again, clarity on the commercial yeah, commercial general cool. rate pay more. That's a category. So is there not a commercial wastewater? Okay, there's not a commercial wastewater. So the way that this, the policy works right now is if you have if you have two commercial, you just pay the one charge for sewer. And maybe if you have they have sort of three different um, commercial activities on one rate of all area, you may pay 1.6 or 7. So it's, it's actually a change. So, yeah, overall the rates that would be collected potentially is not a lot more in terms of dollar terms, but individual rate payers can be well, well, very heavily affected under this change. For example, if you want to give it a crack. Last one. Um, so is, is that is that metered or not metered as this pan? So we're talking metered for sewer, for so yes. wastewater, yes, and metered for water. Yeah. Oh, are they both are they both metered? Or so is it the pan or is it metered as well? Is that all all one? So yeah. is that a meter on it as well? Is that no? No, it's only metered for the water. Yeah. Only metered for the water. Only metered for water and not. Right. Oh, okay. Right, 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 right. It'd make life a lot easier if we could. But yeah, yeah, you're not allowed to assume that the water operator is right. You can't assume that to apply to waste water, can you? Under the rating act. No, you can't. Right. right. You, you say we should have a five minute break. I think what I can do is I think we'll go through a solid waste and then I think we should take five minutes yeah. after that. Right. If that's you guys just because that's a good, probably a good time to. Take a five minute yeah. Oh, um, sorry, I see what you're saying. We've been off until I've talked talk more about rights. Right, Jumped around on you. Yeah. That's all good. Right, I'll go back on to the presentation. Right, so what I want, what we wanted to do, um, as when we were going through the, the long term plan uh, process earlier in the year, we were very much going to, we were suggesting to put in solid waste as a discussion or a, a consultation topic around what would happen with the, the solid waste moving forward from July 1, 2025, clearly because it was in the financial impact of that 10 years. So we'd, we've discussed at length around what we do with solid waste, because we know it's, a, it's an important um, thing for the district, and it's obviously we've had the consultation in the past around it, and it 
you know, obviously got we've got a lot of submissions and things on it. So what I wanted to do, and the reason why I was bringing this up today, was I just wanted to outline why potentially we wouldn't be consulting on it this time round, because the Local Government Act does state that because it's a, an annual plan and it doesn't have financial implication, you can't consult on it in that, um, in that uh, financial year. However, there is also the, there is a view that if we don't do a consultation around it just now, we may need to push that out to something that goes live in 2026. <coughs> so, Mike, do you want to give a bit of a further breakdown in terms of what we've been discussing over the last couple of days? Would that be okay? Yeah, thanks, John. Um, so, uh, so uh, specifically, this is the zone one waste management services, so the smart environmental um, uh, contract uh, principally. And uh, as John mentioned, we had a, a consultation process uh, towards the back end of last year. And, uh, and part of that was resolved by the council that yes, we will reconsult um, and, and it will set out on which uh, particular topics, options basically. And that was resolved by council in December. Whilst it wasn't, to my records, it wasn't resolved by council to reconsult in the long term plan, as we were thinking about <laughs> it, um, it was broadly discussed that that's probably the most likely process to. Um, to follow, um, and we were positioning for that, um, you know, up until more recent events. We now we're doing effectively a annual plan in house, and uh, and and because of the financial impact not landing in the financial year of 24-25, uh, actually uh, it it cannot be consulted, you know, in the normal annual plan way. Um, it would need to be a special consultative process, like the enhanced annual plan, but it couldn't be stitched together, so to speak. So we've been looking at the timelines because the critical um, date for us is the go live for the contract uh, start. Uh, because you might also remember we uh, we resolved to extend the uh, current contract until that. Um, a period of time where we could actually recommence a new contract. Um, so it was all, it's all about timing. The risk, if we're not able to go live with a, with a, a renewed contract or a, a new contract from 1 July uh, 2025, uh, is that we will have to extend again. And you might remember, um, actually, it's a bit of exposure for council to do the, these extensions because you don't have all of the leverage. Um, you're really up to the, um, you know, I don't want to get into the commercial sensitivities, but it probably makes sense that actually it's something to negotiate. And uh, for the period of time we're talking about, like another six months or 12 months, there's a bit of risk there in terms of what commercial outcome we could secure for the community. So, so that being said, we've been quite um, focused on trying to achieve that go live day. And if we were going to join up with the timeline of the, certainly the LTP, and now on an arts annual plan, we could make it. Um, but that would be on the assumption that the consultation process would go hand in glove with the annual plan. And as the, the legality show, you can't do that. You would have to set it along parallel to and running with, if you like, to, to you know, meet the same deadlines. But actually, it becomes a staffing resource issue because now you're doing two things. You're doing the annual plan, you're doing the special consultation for um, zone one solid waste. And also, the, uh, I think of it from a community perspective, um, there's more things going on now and there's less headroom to process all of this and, and perhaps give. Um, you know, pay, pay due mind to what's been uh, discussed. So um, on the basis that actually we can't incorporate it into the enhanced annual plan, it would have to be a special consultative process running alongside in order to meet that 1 July 2025 deadline um, from a staff perspective. So this is infrastructure, but also the assistance we would need from other teams in finance, in uh, uh, community uh, engagement and so on. Um, we're, on. We're at the position now where unless council guided otherwise, we would probably prefer to now defer it until the LTP process in 12 months. The point there is that, is that what council expects? 
is it what the community wants? And so today was all about trying to explore all of that. There are some constraints about what we think we could do and do comfortably in the time frame, but ultimately we feel it's a, it's a matter for council to, you know, uh, knowing what we went through last year and what the feedback from the community was, um, it's just one of those, um, you know, uh, tr tr tricky, tricky decisions to, to form. Um, yes, yeah, so I guess the, we, we knew that the, 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 the community would be, you know, they'd have a focus on this as it was, you know, a potential long term plan consultation topic. So we just wanted to gauge the, you know, gauge your thoughts on it and see if, if it's something, and I know no decisions will be taken today, of course, so that's something for the 10th of April, but um, if, if the, the view is that we should consult this year and do a separate process, completely separate, then, you know, we can. We can do that, but we just wanted to get some sort of ideas in terms of planning and around what your thoughts on it would be. Yes. Well, there's two things there. It's the zone one, and it's the other zones, and it's quite important because, um, for instance, Karamea, I'm not so familiar, obviously, with Marawea, um, but they've tried to run a tight ship up there, and it's cost associated with that, and to be honest, it's just a nightmare and I think of that committee just are pulling their hair out. But that aside, this community zone, whatever we are, three I think needs to be consulted on or zone two. So that does have to be in the consultation as far as the long term uh, the enhanced plan goes. Um, but I think just an explanation like we're going to have for the um, water main possibly for the um, whatever we call it, and region zoners. And, um, but certainly it does have to be a consultation for Karamea and Marawea because they're separate. So it's not an over, it's not just one size fits all. There's two segments to that. Mike, sorry, Mike, you saying that there can't be consultation included in the plan anyway for, for any of the waste water services, solid waste services? So I'll, I'll, my layperson's uh, understanding is that we're looking at two separate documents. They may go out in the same mail yeah, but they, yeah. list, but people are going to have to read two things and probably wonder why there's a, yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple of things we've thought about. So that remembering that if, if it's going to be rated for, it doesn't come until 1 July 2025. And so the legislation is really clear. If you're doing a long-term plan, then it's a 10-year plan, that's fine. An annual plan is about a 12-month period. So what our challenge is, is we're taking the feedback we had last year, trying to put it into a new system or whatever we can achieve, not rated to 1 July 2025. Mike's got this challenge of, if the decision is made to go you know, that particular way, he's got to do something with a contract, he's got to tender something, and these things, you suddenly can say, oh, but you've got 12 months. It's never quite that simple if you suddenly have to change from a bag to a bin system. We've got to go and order. So you've got to give contractors enough time on it. So as we've worked backwards, we've looked and gone, well, could we start it in September 25, say, once we've got the house legal plan sorted? And that looks a bit tight. So then we've come back, well, could we do it in July? And then that's been seen as a bit tight as well. And it's like, well, it comes down to what we think. Could we do it similar timing to the annual plan Then it's being dealt with? Has to have its own process and own hearings. Gets confusing. Some people would only want to consult on the enhanced annual plan. They want more interested in refuse, or they are interested in refuse. So it is a wee bit tricky. So, um, and it is just how we use ultimately the resources we've got to try and achieve um, something that's cohesive. But then also looking at the issue we're talking about with water and wastewater, you can see people getting reasonably confused as we try and interpret and give them better systems of being paying for things. So, yeah, it's, it's a wee bit tricky. But at the moment, we think we just need to, unfortunately, do the two, maybe not quite in parallel, but pretty close in parallel. Remembering we're consulting predominantly from sort of mid-ish April to mid-ish May, thereabouts, and we try and do this sort of ways. Perhaps just outside of that, so people can concentrate on those two things. Sure. So, uh, this originally started as the opportunity of doing something regionally. So, has that actually gone by the way now? Because that was a big thing around the time was aligning everyone's contracting to get more bigger area, better bang for the buck. So, 
Uh, it's not just the local context, you're going to need to extend it for a short period of time. It's just a uh, little going opportunity to get a bit of regional there. So that was certainly uh, part of the wider um, you know, proposition and potential benefits. Because we uh, reached a point uh, through last year's process that actually the, the ticking clock was the February 2024 expire of our contract. That was the real um, you know, catalyst to, to move things ahead. Uh, certainly there is that uh, wider and regional approach to solid waste management, which was part of it. Um, because we did what we had to do to meet our, um, our contract extension, uh, we've communicated that to our regional uh, colleagues and, and actually that concept is still alive um, and we would have to, you know, if, we, if council did guide or was decided to actually push um, our process back until the LTP, essentially the first 12 months, we would go back to our regional colleagues and, and update them about that. I wouldn't say it, it stops anything materially. There was really no... Um, I would say Buller was the was the lead agency of that work. We certainly were the, the driving force towards it. So I don't think we're going to miss a bus if we do a hold back 12 months. Um, but it does effectively uh, delay any regional um, you know, collaboration and and uh, an opportunity really. So so that is still alive and uh, is not um, sunk by waiting 12 months, but it is delayed 12 months at least because of that. Um, Does that also mean we need to, you know, if you went that keen on as apply for an extension for the current provider? So if we do the consultation now, um, well, in a similar time, that means we're in a better position to not have to. So we've got two choices, right? We've got to delay the annual plan and then we have to negotiate an extension or do it soon in parallel to the enhanced annual plan. And then we won't have to apply, or probably won't have to apply for extension. So those are two choices, really. Yes, just to sort of block out the timelines. Um, about the key activities. So the, um, the best way to think of it is if the consultation was concluded and there was confirmation of the level of service, which is really what we're consulting on bins bags, uh, that would need to be uh, concluded by 30 June, more or less. And that would have been fine if we are running on a yeah. LTP schedule because uh, the next six months would be things like procurement plan, which is getting ready to tender, and then the tender process, so that by Christmas you're already you're, you're in a position to award a contract. And then the following six months, say from 1 January to 30 June, was all about the successful contractor mobilising and getting ready to deliver the service. So 1 July 2025, are you ready to go now? Now, they're large time frames, but we honestly think we need it. Um, and so the, the proposition here is that if we don't conclude consultation process and have resolved level of service outcomes by June 30 this year, we are really pushing our luck to be able to conclude all those other activities by 1 July 2025. And then our view is, well, if you miss that date by a day or a month or a year, what's the difference? You've got to, re you've got to renegotiate the contract. Um, and, and, you know, of course, the risk is measured by how much longer you're extending. But uh, it's the same proposition. We're, we're just cautious that, well, and it's, it's an assumption it may not come to pass, but if you've got to renegotiate another extension, um, actually, Rate payers may, which is what we saw last time. I mean, we tried our best to bring the price down, but it was what it was. And um, we think if we haven't concluded a consultation uh, level service decision by the end of June this year, we would really be uh, pushing it to to go live twelve months later. So, um, I mean, there's solutions, but uh, I suppose it's just to get a read from council. Um, yeah, I fully support this being consulted on concurrently. Um, just to make sure we do the documents, however they have to be done to be um, to be work within the, the rules. But 
um, it's a no-brainer. There's risk to council here of delaying, as you say, with the with the having to roll over a, an emergency contract effectively. Um, I think we just get on with it. We got a lot of good feedback last time, and um, and I'm hopeful that the proposal that we'd consult on will have some good options for the community, and we can get on with it. I'd be in support of that too, and I think it's something that this council has started, so this council should have to finish it off and not leave it for someone else to tidy up. Yes, Probably so. along the same note of just getting on with it. Um, you know, there's money from the Ministry of Environment for the currently dump from the Weybridge that we were told 12 months ago was in place, and I think they've got about a month to get it done now. Um, because it's been, it has been extended and extended, and the Ministry of Environment are going to be taking their money back or requesting their money back if their job is not done. So that's the risk, you know, you've got extra costs. So I think we've just got to wipe the bottom and put a sake of it down. I think that's sort of a fair bit of the stare, isn't it? Any different views apart from that? No? All right. Then let's move on. Let's have a five minute, five minute break, short five minute break. No more. And
Welcome, Welcome back um, to those who are watching um, and, and Jamie. Uh, we're going to move on now um, with the next part of the presentation, which it looks to me like a budget, budget overview. Mr. Marshall. Thank you. Uh, so currently we're sitting uh, with this position in front of us in terms of rates movements, the two, two parts. So as we talked about last week, you know, 11%, 11% on general rate, which is predominantly your rural properties. And then of course, we've got our targeted rate movements. Now, as we went through before with the change in the policy for water and wastewater, we do get a, a benefit there for properties predominantly in Westport and Reefton if we proceed with that. So you're, we'll, show you some, we'll show you some specific examples shortly so you can see what that does because it is quite dramatic in Reefton. Um, but currently we've got the situation of, of a, if you are paying water, Wastewater, refuse, and general rates. You could, you know, looking at a 21% movement. We're going to have a chance uh, later to go through some just some questions in general. So I just want you just to just have a think a bit about that. But we're at that situation where we've, um, you know, our looking at our rate increases. This is a challenging year. Certainly compared to uh, long-term plan in previous years, it is, uh, is a severe spike. Just remind ourselves, though, in 23-24, we thought we had a cost of living crisis there, so we did hold back on our, our water movements. Um, there was that discussion around the regional water entity, which might give us some support. And ultimately, that um, hasn't arrived, but it's certainly why we'll be continuing to push for a regional water entity. So there is no way around this. Is a, it is a tricky year, and it will get more trickier. Um, those of you who had a chance to read the information John sent me out from local government New Zealand, um, it costs are really problematic in the sector, um, particularly at this current time. So that's rates. And the other challenge, as we said to you, is debt. Just repeating what I said. Our debt profile um, certainly does lift a bit more this year. We're not, we're not getting to a position where we're not able to borrow. So this is okay for 24, 25, and I say that respectfully. It does mean, though, that we have got this internal net threshold of 25 million, which we've pushed. So we will need appropriate resolutions noting we're outside our own financial strategy and in our own rules. Um, but we're being very clear on that. But again, looking forward into the long-term plan, we know that you know, despite our best efforts, we will start to see lifting our levels of debt to a point where we're going to have to have make some hard decisions about how much we actually gross want to borrow. So remember, we have two funding lines available to us. One is our, our what's called our, our Westpac or our main transactional banker who provide us with $35 million. And then we have $20 million available through the LGFA. The one thing about the LGFA is that because we're that guarantee relationship, non-guarantee relationship, we do pay a bit more in the cost of our debt. So that is something certainly in the next 12 months we, we look we really need to address. We haven't got too concerned about it at this stage because of the long-term plan process. We've obviously deferred 12 months, but even just for an interest cost issue, we'll need to have a good hard look at that as an option for us. So in terms of um, debt profile, uh, as we referred to, the main piece of debt that would be easy to see is the Westport um, water main line, but you know we are committing to that. That debt effectively gets drawn down in our sort of our floating or our, those sort of arrangements over the next twelve months. But then we put it into a fixed arrangement from one July twenty twenty five, and then we start rating for the interest and the principal. So. That's where we sit. I'm just going to pause briefly, and I know there'll be some who aren't here today who find the debt curve slightly more alarming. Um, we're in that almost that perfect storm where we have rate movements and we have debt, both are moving. Um, we're being very restrained on our debt and that we are borrowing for capital items. We're not borrowing for operating costs. Yes, in our day-to-day -day management, it will be a bit of up and down as we manage our cash flow, but that's the finance team to use our treasury tools and just you know, get their way through our pinch points like right now for the month of March when we're paying. But in terms of our capital, work, our debt borrowing program, it's on capital. So it's good. And our capital program where we borrow is around water and wastewater. So um, yes, we have the stuff that was set up for BHL, but predominantly, absolutely, we're borrowing for the right things. 
So we're disciplined in that regard. Do you want me to get the water into the, 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 the something? Yeah, we might as, well, might as well bring that up. Well, just while John's doing that, we gave you a breakdown of all the grants um, that are included in the draft um, and, and your plan. I just want to check on two things. Are there any grants in there that anyone has a concern about whether or not they should be included um, in the Hearts Daniel plan? Uh, I know I'm looking to Chrissy that I, I suppose my expectation is we'll be dropping a note to every one of these parties who does have a named grant to them so that they know it's in and they need to decide whether they still want it or confirm their support. There's obviously um, group ones where that's uh, up, for, up for grabs every year. That's different again. So just pausing briefly, can any, has anyone in there got a particular issue with any of them that they want to raise now amongst the rest of the council? John? Um, just with the discussion, just a very initial one, is portfolio holders today with Chrissy, and um, there's some things that have been on the past that have been Plan, um, process and then re again for this no accountability. So we want to um to this year that anyone that gets a grant has some sort of accountability. And I'm thinking of the ones like we may have given to like youth portfolio and um, information centers and that. So we'll tie that up so it's more closely aligned with outcomes and objectives. So we can, they can be reviewed um, and we're actually achieving something for that money. Um, just, I guess, through the chat, um, there might be this, it won't change anything significantly here because it won't change the amount of grants that we're giving out. Um, it just might be an internal process that we implement just so we can understand what the grant's been given out for and what they did with the funds and um, to bring it back. Um, and councillors may wish, and, and it's not for this um, this um, workshop, but may wish to discuss um, another structure. There being a separate grant rounds for potentially tourism reasons, and, and there might be a, a, a pot that's available for those. Um, there are councils that don't have their annual plans and their long term plans that aren't for funding opportunities. Um, so we, we discussed that earlier, but um, as I said, nothing really to change from today, but just to and ponder on in the next couple of weeks. Um, the old ghost road has been, <coughs> oh, excuse me there, for a number of years, and I think it's probably outlived the need now. Um, a few from up in the Northern Bulla, um, Tony has spoken about it myself in a number, that initially it was to get them off the ground, and they've got a good bank balance now, and um, Probably the need for that is not great. They would see differently, like anybody would. Um, I question the full amount for Coal Town because, as is noted, year four it was to go and it was in the paper to say they didn't want it, but I'm just not sure what amount is needed. Um, but I think communication should be along that line. Um, and very much indicating the fact that they weren't going to get it from next year on. Um, I think that should be um, really negotiated. And I wondered why the um, youth one, did we, we must have agreed last year for that to double too, did we? I think it was a one-year increase only. Um, yeah, there was a specific reason that I can't, yeah, I can't remember top of my head what that was for, but that was a, a one-year increase and that was tied to sports housing as well. Yeah, and it sort of carried on. And so I guess that, that can be a discussion and, and a decision for full council to make um, to, to advise if you want to see some changes in Lagos grants. might be a, a reduction in the whole thing. It might just be to look at them one at a time. Part of the usual process is we go out to every group that usually applies anyway, um, such as the old ghost rail, junior, northern bullers and youth, and just say, no, this is the time when you do ask for that. Um, and if we were going to make any changes, that might be a long-term plan change that we make next year. Yeah, I do note in there that the, unless I can't see for looking, um, is an amount there for that northern buller, um, advanced northern buller group. Yeah. That was money in there. 
probably needs to be read. And again, I think when it comes comes back to council um, and we have the it's applications, not the is it not? It's $5,000. It is $5,000. Oh, yeah. um, uh, uh, can you bring the prison? Yes, yes, get the Sarah for society. Yeah, so, so it's under, it's under oh, Northern, yeah, Northern Buller Resourcing. Group. It's under the first heading, Grants Tourism. Which one? Grants Tourism, the first group. It's on, it's on the screen now, Rosie. Um, it's, it's missed out of there. You're right. You're right. Oh. oh, sorry. I thought you said Northern Buller. No, Northern Buller. Apologies. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. It's for some reason it's not in that little table. I'll make sure that that's added. Okay. One more, Ed. Thank you. Advanced Northern yeah. West Coast. Yeah. I think there's, some, there's, there's two regional policies, there's one around tourism destination management um, strategy and there's one around um, West Coast Heritage strategy and it, it pays actually the district pocket of money that supports those at a fuller level. So, so maybe instead of actually specifying them as these individual museums and the and individual tourism grants, they actually, actually allocate a pocket of money and then um, whoever the entities are, they fit in within the regional strategy. So there is a there is a network locally around heritage. Uh, it could be a, a funding pool that goes towards that, and they have a bit more say in how it's distributed and, and more reporting back on what they um, propose to do and the achievements. And again, around tourism is a new promotional body. Being, that represents the whole region, so it could be a better being for Buck that, that goes there and, and aligns, it gets leverage out of the um, regional strategy as well. I think um, one, one thing so that they haven't written is it, it provides it, those organisations certainty. You know, mm -hmm. if you say every year that someone has to, they have to apply and you, you might get none, you might get everything, it, it's a lot harder for these organisations to actually plan what they do. But I mean, also, there's the things like the Kawatiri Trail. Who, who, who I guess would love to have some council money to support them and what they do and you know what what is their way into, into the into the room, so to speak. You know, you've got the you know, old ghost road who's, who's a part in there. So basically that you know that has come along for the hand out each, each year and get up at the moment. Um, where's where's the where's the opportunity for new big brothers to come in and, and I quite like the idea of accountability. Mm. I think because that shouldn't just happen without any accountability because it's right pay money. Yeah, and I guess that's a good thing in terms of the, the, the process that we'll do or, or Chris's team will do in terms of, you know, to do that with part of the submissions process and it'll be up for the you guys to decide where the money where the, where the money goes. In fairness, all, there always used to be KPIs for all of those groups and I know um, the Karamea one, for instance, always used to send it in religiously, but then I think they just got filed away and then um, because of lack of change of staff or whatever, and no one asked them again. So things are just slips through the cracks. So. Hey, John, I'd yeah. make you the last one. I suggest we keep in the current budget, but our method of distribution may be different, and it may be a polling what we currently give to support this group might be contestable fund, and they may be, you know, <coughs> could be rather a period of more than one year, but contestable, so they've got to put forward. Yeah, I'm going to support. I'm going to propose it to council just as to how else that might look, and then councillors can have a chat and decide if that's what they want to do moving forward. Okay, certainly, should we? We could probably look at the, the total grant figure too. If we were trying to cut back in all of these other yes. areas, it might pay to just review it and make sure it's still appropriate. That's but somebody could have some negotiations or conversation with the museum, it could be quite helpful. Yeah. Cool to um, can we just so we, we, we have had a um, discussion on Cold Town and a couple of things. Did ask them that question that was in the paper and they said well that individual wasn't speaking on behalf of the Cold Town uh, Trust. Mm -hmm. They were not part of them. So and they they certainly were really wishing to sort of have some uh, certainty for the next 12 months. To pick up uh, where we go, we're going to confirm that these are the items that are in there, but when we write to these ones that are in there, we say you need to provide us with a, you know, a one-pager as to why you still need your funding and yeah. how you might um, <laughs> even be able to reduce the amount of funding. I think we should ask that question as well just on your council's behalf, so we'll do something on that basis if everyone's comfortable. 
Cool. Um, if we just look now on the screen and we'll look at some of these rating examples. So, John, we'll just... Yep. What are the two? Let's oh, make... Can we go back to um, the overall draft movement, rate movement, please? Yeah. Uh, could have, I get yeah, we can do Yeah, did do that, John. Because we just skipped over that. This is yeah, we did, yeah. And... Um, yeah, sort of very, very telling there when you see regulatory, who we heard earlier on wanted um, another staff member and um, increase, and they've managed to work through their budgets to come down with minus 0.1%. Um, and community services are still up there, and road and, and community facilities. And I'd like to take a government approach and just say, right. Um, the community services drop by they just go away, do your budgets, just cut as you have to cut when you don't have the money because quite clearly the ratepayers don't have that money. And we cut to 0.7 on increase, take two percent off, and another two percent off roading because we heard earlier that um, ten percent may not be completely um, Funded, so why are we going to rate for that 25% or 10%, whatever it was, um, when our ratepayers can't afford it? And I see there's efficiencies that need to be met there. So I say take 2% off there. And, um, and probably community facilities, we take 0.5 off that and be quite harsh and just go back to those departments and say that has to be cut because we cannot afford and it's all, no point we've sat here and we said and listened oh we have to have increases we need this and we need that and an email came through earlier from colin along similar i haven't got it in front of me yeah, yeah. similar to you yeah. yeah and i fully agree that we just have to be quite ruthless and say we, people cannot afford this rate increase, so the departments have to go back and make cuts accordingly to drop it down. Because we can sit here until the cows come home and um, nobody's going to want to cut anything and we'll put a good cause up why they need the increase and we see the regulatory have managed to drop theirs by 0.1%. So I think accolades to them and tough you know, we've got to take a harsh line somewhere and that's on that. And we've talked about where there could be rate, um, cuts in the targeted rates. Sure. So I suppose on that, that, that one surprised me, the regulatory one, is how, what, why, I thought it was so needed, the extra, how did, how is it going to minus? Yeah, so we, there was five roles we were looking, six roles we were looking to beef up. Two in the roading, so they linked to the roading discussion we've had this, this afternoon. There's uh, two round community services. There's a, sorry, two, well not two, I think it's one, one and a bit oh, round community good. services, which is in and funded. There's a role which we we do in this one, we definitely need to hold, which is it's a compliance role between the regulatory team and the engineering team to make sure the handling subdivision consents and resource consents for services. That's an area where also we risk getting um, having our fees clipped if we don't get that work done. That's one we definitely have to commit to. And we've got a bit of work inside finance and corporate to make sure we're supporting our project reporting appropriately and correctly as we go forward. And I suppose what we're trying to just do there is make sure that the, the level of reporting you've had through PIP slash RAC out of flood recovery we continue to be able to do that. Mike and I have been looking how ways how we can trim that. There is, there is always this challenge when you're looking at areas because I can sit there and I can already, I, I know there's two or three things I've said I would cut out. They may not necessarily agree with what Rosalie thinks. They may not agree with what Joe thinks. If, if you're wanting, I, I wouldn't say, I would, I would just give you the advice, if you want us to get the general rate down, give us a... Global, okay, don't tell us where it is because it's probably easier for us just to go, right, we'll take it there, there, there and report to you and get you to the what you want. 
um, unless you all absolutely want to get into community services and give it a decent go, <laughs> then that's one option. But just be easier for if you do want to get it down, then just tell us and we'll, we'll, there's a few areas we'll just have to just say, right, we won't do that work. Um, and we need to tell you what it is. I mean, there is, you know, there is one particular property where we're going through a process and that is Carnegie. We need to complete that process. But that has got, you know, about a 7% general rate contribution going forward. Um, but we need to get an answer what we do. We can't take it out this year if that was agreed. We've got to finish that job. Uh, but that's definitely an area. This, there's a couple like that that um, definitely go forward. But then you're starting to cut into your muscle when you start saying, okay, well, we're we going to fund libraries. Do we want to fund the MBS? Do we really want to fund as much as Perth? All those things. Does the Reefton pool really need to be open? That's that type of muscle cutting that becomes probably a long-term plan discussion. So with that wee bit of guidance, feedback would be good. Go ahead. Um, I think we've had this discussion last year. We'll ask staff to look at, uh, at the hours and operations and that the service level, and, but we've also had the feedback of what we're starting on the long-term plan consultation, which said that they, did, they valued the parks and reserves and the libraries and Probably the one that was the lowest out of all those community services was the theatres. But it was things that people did want, mm -hmm. did value. Um, and the big, the big dollars aren't in the, the over, This is percentage, but the overall budgets aren't big in these areas compared to drivers, which is around roading and waste water and water supply. So if we want to get rates down, uh, probably. Well, I mean, it's about $200,000 percentage. And rates increases not yeah. roughly. Uh, gen general rates are around about 130. 130. Uh, it's about 1%, probably just around about that. Targeted rate, well, it comes down to which targeted rate you're talking about. But I've got to say, in the water and wastewater, you are in an okay position. And some of your water and wastewater accounts and others, you are not in a good position. Part of the rate increase you'll talk about shortly how to get you in. Because when we come to a water entity from 1 July 25, they will be asking one question. There'll be a few others, but one main question, are you funding yourself? We're not too bad in that case. Some, we're not good, but we're not too bad. The reason we were below, we're above the line on that chart is a lot of district council have been addressing those rates charges for a number of years. Not perfect, but much better than others. And Liz? Is, will there be any room to move in the targeted rate? Or not so much. It's, oh, the general it's rate. just general rate. Targeted rating is so much driven by this water reform. Yeah. And if we held, we held last year, yeah. did it for the right reason, hindsight, it wasn't the right reason. And now we've got to pay for a bit of it this year. It's general rate where the focus um, has to be. And um, refuse will come out of the consultation process, what we're doing there ultimately. So. I don't think there's a number that's acceptable, but it'll be interesting to see like what a total rate increase of 15% looks like. You know, like in a real world example. Fifteen. Mm. Yep. And and so when we look at that 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 line there, total rates. Should we increase this twenty one? You'd like to see fifteen? Yeah. I I'd think. like to see what that looks like. Yeah, I just I can't see, and, and I just read what you said, David, was about just saying, oh, let's take another four off the total. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. If there's specific ones here, like Rosalie said, maybe, but not that I think any of them should be cut, but I just can't see any of this 15, 10, 5. What John, I, I think it's important just what I suppose Rosalie mentioned certain, certain parts of the business to look at. The reason why we look from Roden at 4.6%, if we think about back to October, November time, we brought the Roden to you guys and you said if we can get that element under 5%, you know that that that's that, that's sort of fair enough given it's the number one community outcome. So we've got it at four point three, I think it is. And I think if you also add into that the what we're talking about community services, for example, I know that's a two point seven percent increase, but actually we have to remember that those those roles are already funded out of last year's because of the restructure that was done that you know that was done uh, mid year. So. Um, there's a couple of things that those two, for example, those, however, at 1.5 or 2, I can't remember the exact figure, Chrissy might be able to tell me, they're people that are already in tow, essentially, it, it, it staff that's already there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, just, I, I just think like um, a palatable, you know, 
sort of palatable rate rise would be in the teens rather than the twenties. I mean, it's no one's going to like it any regardless. But I look around the country and some of the figures that they're quoting from many centres are in the teens, and, and that's still a big hell of a big rate rise. And I think I think you put twenty in front of it, and I think um, it's sort of more of a backbreak for some. Can I just? Yes. Um, I know that you're talking this number, and I'd love to hear what we need to end it on. We do have a piece of really important communication to share with our community this year, which was last year when we did the annual plan, we said we we're holding those targeted rates down and it's $1.2 million. And no matter what happens, we said it in last year's annual plan, no matter what happens, we're going to need to put rates up 10% in the targeted rates area. We reckon 10%. Now look where it's landed. It actually is that 10. So if we actually make sure we explain why we've come to this place. We're not trying to recoup that 1.2, we're just trying to rate what we should this year. So we're running larger deficits. Because we're not recouping that 1.2. We're not recouping, yeah. we're not trying to do that. So we're just making sure we rate what we should. Because if you think of that graph that was put up before where you looked at it, and there's a real tiny amount, that is an mm. obvious graph that you can see what we should have done last year. So we're, doing not, we're not doing a, um, a phased in change, we're making a step change here. So really the only question in discussion is this 11% in the general rates in a way, but I understand that's not the headline number and that's not what you're going to hear from the community. But I do think it's an important thing to talk about when we say this is why the rates are more than you want. So there is a visit, sorry. Yeah. Just to pick up on what you said, John, earlier, that there's no extra staff. I think Chrissy had indicated that there was going to be one additional staff. And again, in our previous um, sessions, there was going to be another staff again in regulatory, but that's been able to be sorted through. And it's an increase in the staff. And, but just going back to what Colin said, you know, that percentage in um, salaries, et cetera, was really sort of very, very high. And this is where we're sort of needing to hone down, and that's why I picked that while it might seem a lot in community, you know, as a percentage, and that's where you have to go careful. When percentages come into smaller numbers, they are greater. But um, that's, I, I see probably both of those very, very achievable. And, yeah. well, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Can I just ask, um, is it is it simple to answer? I don't know the community service. So if we were to to slash that as by two percent, as Rosalie suggested, what 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 is that? What is it taking out? What would be the first thing to go? Um, through the chair, we'd be looking at levels of service. So um, we'd have to look at our opening times. Um, we've just got the last. I think it's just about twelve months. We've got the subcommittee liaison officer. Um, who's been doing some amazing work for our, our pools and reserve communities. Um, and part of the increase is increasing his hours, um, which um, is very much needed. Um, the additional position was slightly outside of what we looked at previously, and that was signed off by the CE. Um, and that's the engagement manager noting that we needed to get on top of our proactive comms um, and, and the engagement with the community. So that's that position that was there. Yeah, so there is no just there is no more people. Get, get. We have absolutely no more people in the budget now. But it's one that isn't employed at the moment. No, 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 no. There's no no proposed new employees. No. Absolutely none. It just I, I just um, wanted to be because I think it's useful because it is easy to look at a list and say, well, that's a bit high. But I mean, it's actually a bit different when you say, okay, so what that actually means will be. And I don't know. Pick a building. We'll be we'll be saying we're not going to open a library as many days, or a um, theatre or, or whatever. That's that, or, or not going to be as as um, engaged with our smaller communities. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not I'm not saying that's necessarily right or wrong. I'm just saying it's not a percentage. It's actually a change to what we're able to deliver in certain areas. And I think that's how we make sure we think about it. That's all. Yes, John. Yeah, and I think um, that this this goes back to the point that I made. Um, you know, I think we've made all along. If, if that's the case, it would be potential. We'll need to look now at a, le a level of service reduction. 
I just think also too, I mean, Colin made some points that were useful about well, we just need to just drop no no remuneration movements for, for council staff. On on that statement, it's it's sort of a huge hugely helpful statement, but it's a hugely unhelpful statement as well. So I wouldn't be going asking you to go anywhere near that statement. If you need us to get costs down, then we will we will go back and we will we will make some, you know, we'll just knock out some stuff where we think it's possible to do. Um, but yeah, directing us down there, that type of thing, it's just counterproductive to keeping a um, you know engaged stuff. Yes. Yeah, and then you have to add in union negotiations, the change in every single IA. You know, it's that it, it comes with a lot. Of, lot of, you know. Can you please expand on the seven percent Carnegie Library thing? Yeah, it's not. It's point. It's like a point of seven. Oh, so, so Carnegie is going through a process of being strengthened and put into some good use for the future. So that's that's great. Um, been a few challenges, you'll probably wear those and they will progress. And we need to give it another 12 months to get those applications for funding and the equipment and all that type of thing sorted. The way Kennedy sits in our box at the moment is that it will be strengthened. Council puts in 500,000, I think it's about a million coming in from external funding. But we have to fund things like depreciation and maintenance long term into the future. Now, you could sit there with my hat on and go, hmm. Is that really a good spend of money? And I don't want to debate whether it is or isn't, but that's got to go into our funding at the moment to be allowed for. But there's also the other challenge, you could just say, oh, we'll cut it now, we don't want to go there. But actually then you'd have to go through a process of what you do with the building because that's also going to cost. Um, might have a short-term cost, but you've still got to do something this year. So right now we need to go through and figure out are we going to get the money to support the building and strengthen it or you know, they'll be blunt. Do we remove the building physically and we don't have that cost on term? We're not at that debate yet because we've still got to sort this issue. That's the type of thing. When I look at our property budgets, um, you know, one way around getting capital is selling capital. You know, so we've got a number of you know items that we'll still keep pursuing. Um, we've, we've knocked out quite a bit. Uh, we've done all that work on healthy homes and our senior housing. That's sort of almost completed now. But we've also got a number of houses that just need love and care um, to bring them into some sort of standard for our tenants. So we've got to keep investing, but it's a matter of what, what can we knock out further. I certainly think touching our parks and reserves, you've got such you've got really well maintained parks and reserves, you know, from my experience in that space. We don't really want to touch that either. So but we'll go back. Mike and I had a we had a we've had a look at this a um, couple of consultancy budgets. We've got, this, we've got this real dilemma next year because we've got, we've got to get ourselves ready in theory for what we look like as a bumped up water entity. We've got to develop a few policies and practices. You know, It might be that we put some allowance in our budgets of about 100000 to fund that work and get ourselves ready so we're ready to go. might be we've just got to cut and borrow somebody else's to make that work. There's things like that we just might have to look at there's other things that we've already been through this with you, but you know, we've got more higher audit fees. You know, when we're up around about 90,000 more than we would have ever budgeted. And again, comes back to these water issues. It's not such an impact on the general rate, but we have to get our assets regularly valued because our auditors sit there and say, well, technically, your know, value is probably up or down. So there's things there we just have to, and that's part of protecting the council in terms of making sure it applies in some terms with the acts. So yeah, there's a few. So if, if you want to give us that direction, I know with what Lynn's talked about with the water and wastewater, how we describe the, the movements in that will be a bit of a bit of a trickle down and we might get around that 19, maybe into the 18 mark. If we want to get with a 1-5 in front of something, then we'll just get into that um, uh, work plan and just start to knock a few things. And we'll just declare what we've done there with you. But... Um, yeah, I just suggest that's what that's the advice you want to get. Well, just, just have to deal with it. Through more discussion. Around that. I guess is that the guidance for us to take away to get that, that total rates figured out to 15%? Is that what you're I don't know. I don't, no, no, I, don't, I, don't I don't think so. I, I, I mean, I think we're like all of us, you know, we it would be great if it could be lower. And it's and it is a general that 21% is. Is, a, is not across the board at all. But if we just go to those examples, yeah, and, and there are some other statements. Yeah. Anyway, 
It, but, but I suppose there'd be a general excitement if we could get down to a number with a one in front of it, like 19.9. I just think it's even particularly yeah. like it's a, it's a sales mm. and Yeah, I definitely know we can do that. We can get it described that with that wool and wastewater. But let's look at some of these examples to make this bigger. Yeah. And I still feel that there's still fat in the system. I've seen it year after year after year. And I don't want the rate cars to be funding that fat um, because I can just say now that, you know, it's even 100,000 that we have spent this year that well, miraculously we've been able to find because we've actually got it there. So well, actually, one has to hmm. say we overrated for 100,000. Well, actually, we are struggling in a number of areas. And, and as you know, we report to RAC, we've got issues, issues with the Dublin from Bella Holy. So we're actually not in the best space in those 23, 24 years. So miraculously, um, no, we're actually not as good as we could be. We've had a few you know, things go the wrong way. So if we look at these rates here, um, I won't go through each one, but you can see their percentage change to previous years. So Katamea there, um, 9.54, so that's... And that was absolutely out of order the way that we ended up getting that compared with other districts, other areas, because uh, I dealt with a lot of phone calls, and in some cases it was fine, but in others it certainly wasn't. And it wasn't just. So, what are you, what are you, sorry, what are you talking about? Rosemary? You were saying Karamea sort of 9% increase. And, and the rates, and the rates, yeah. And the rates, yeah. Yeah, that's not out of order with. It was last year. Uh, well, over and above everybody else. No, that was, that was yeah. for this year. This is this year, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a couple of last year's one, fair enough. But... Um, yeah, but. Low socioeconomic economic group, they're yeah. all on a benefit. Well, probably 90% yeah. on a benefit. But if you look up there, it's all to do with water and wastewater if you're a little woman yeah, on that stand. It's not affordable. So the question then, what is affordable and is therefore the district, the district rating does or doesn't it help? But if you look at that sewer rate figure, that actually have to increase a bit to catch up with what Westport and Reef didn't pay. Just as a bit of a side issue there. Yeah, sure. um, just, just go back up again. Yeah, I'm not separate. Let's go up again. Back up again. Right. And so you can see, you know, same problem, Mokanui. Absolutely. Same problem with the, the water. Same type of people. Yep. Um, so what do you say to, they can't do their sewage job, they can't just not pay their rates. Can't pay their water, that's right. And we're in that dilemma because... And again and again, I have a brick wall that I have asked and asked, please, can you come and have a look at Karamea compliant water at the domain that we did for $50,000 and all I ever hear about these water schemes that the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and to this day, nobody has made a footstep in that direction. And you know, Chrissy, that we did that scheme compliant water for fifty thousand dollars, sixty, I beg your pardon, for the the campground. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's what it was. And that's compliant. And we kept talking, and I don't believe that Little Wanganui or Mokanui it will be additional might be $100,000, but it's not hundreds of thousand dollars. And we're putting these figures here, scaring the pants off people that they can't afford their rates. You may not hear them, but I do. And I have probably two or three of them really distraught people, what do we do? And all I say, I know that Karamea has done this and we've talked about hundreds of thousands. And as I said, I'm just blowing in the wind. I know nothing. Yeah, I, I think, I, I, can I just, just suggest to you, though, that one of the challenges in a small scheme, it is hard, even if you can find some magical capital change, they're always going to be hard of these smaller schemes. That, that oh, group, that's that's the that's grouping that's up, that's yep, and the regional-based approach are super critical. I, you know, one thing I'd be saying to people, you need to get into your, your minister of um, the West Coast, that's so you you MP, MP and, and tell her to start advocating for a bigger thing, as we've done so in Bullock for the last three or four years. Um, I know, I know, but, but these are the things we have to use as our shots. Um, so seven yes. blown hectare there, yes. um, reasonably under, at least under that 10 number, again driven by being sort of rural properties. Um, and one Mangaroa. Um, and again, I risk my case. Yep. It's tricky, I get that. It's not tricky, it's 
unacceptable that anybody was expected to pay a 32% increase. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, we can sit here, yeah. sort of relatively well off and not understand, not knowing where money's part coming for the next bill. And the ones we hear from are not usually the ones that work their way through to make things happen. Um, and go without, you know. So if we just, I tell you what, we'll come back and just talk about these these, these water ones just at the end, because I think, you know, just they can talk about what the options might be. Just So just flip through the next set, John. So Westport, so I just want to highlight here with Westport, like making those changes that Lynn talked about with these additional properties, Westport was looking at a 228 but it'll drop down to a 19.57 because there's $128 movement. We can use the benefit to hold the rate at a lower level. So that's the type of thing we've been identifying there. We've just got to work through that Westport Russell one and the Carter Speech one to see what they mean for those. But you know, Punakaki again, another difficult, challenging one. Let's roll down the lot next sector, John. Again, we're looking here predominantly. So Refton, this, this one's a good news story. There is one. So Refton was going to be 19%, but because we can bring these additional rating units in, we're now looking at 12.8. So yeah, $213 is quite a big saving there with that particular benefit there. And then you'll see the other movements there for those various schemes. Obviously, Westport, Westport there must be a commercial one that if... Um, Row 35, is it? Yeah, yeah commercial ones here, yeah. as we see them sitting. Again, that um, 35% you see for commercial, they commercial. No, it's, no, it's not 35, that was the one above, Rosa. Yeah, so what was yeah. the previous half of the mm. um, And then if we roll down to the rural ones, at the next 35 was for Pinakaiki. Pinakaiki, yeah. Um, That's real, yeah. yeah. A few rural ones here, all with sort of varying bits and pieces to do with um, refuse there of 402, so it might, might be one with two refuse rates for some reason there. Maybe that's the pub out there or something. It seemed a bit odd. Uh, but, yeah, those movements in there, and if we can get if we can get down to sort of like an under 20 for, over, for overarching or get the generate down, then they'll drop a bit more. So if we now just talk about these smaller water schemes. So the, the thing, and this is, it's, again, it's no silver bullet, but go up to that Waimanga one. Oh, sorry. I just thought that's right. I'll go back and share. Let's go back here. So back up to Waimanga Yeah, I'll go back and just talk about that one. Same points. Yeah. Right. So if we, and in the Pinakaki one, there's, it's a good example. So if we take... Um, oh, my, my, my. If we, I'll just have to spring up in front of my screen. So the the water rate, very district, the district water rate would sit at fifteen hundred and seventy eight. There's a little bit more to drop that down, based on what we've seen today. So if you look at Waimangara, we're proposing sixteen sixty eight as a standalone scheme. If we district club it up, then we're talking, you know, 1578. It's not a huge change. It is something that helps, admittedly. Um, it's just a matter of how we bring that in. I know some councils, these smaller schemes, have done things like we will only lift the water rate on the smaller schemes by X percent every year, which helps, but it also means they're not necessarily ever getting to the legislative requirement thing on a standalone scheme. So you can see club rating has to come in at some point. Um, Just sorry to interrupt, mm. but even that 1668 is for untreated water. Mm. So how on earth can we possibly stand, you know, look anybody in the eye and say, we're charging you that for untreated Water. Yeah, it's um, it's it's um, you know, it's it's it's. I, I don't I don't have an answer to you, Rosalie, unless we artificially do something with these water rates and the waste. Not so much the wastewater rates. I know it's an issue in Little Wanganui, but unless we artificially do something there, 
which you know could be yeah, in your drops again. Yeah, but what I mean by artificial, we just we just run bigger deficits in some of these schemes, which is what a lot of councils are doing, and that's why you know, we've been doing the right thing, but it hasn't been helping out for us. Can I just jump in there, um, Rosalie? I totally agree that this is extremely unpalatable, but I mean it is what we've been saying and advocating for now, and what we're saying is wrong <laughs> with the way local government and and the waters is being funded, um, and this is it playing out. Um, so there's, so, you know, so we kind of have to play the, it feels like we have to play the ball that's in front of us, which is, you know, change of government, it's our problem. So, I mean, we've got options, as Douglas said, of, of uh, effectively letting these accounts run into bigger debt. Um, but I'm not sure that that's going to help us um, in the foreseeable. So I'm not, I'm not sure what the answer is, to be honest. But, I mean, I agree with you. Low socioeconomic area, horrible number. Um, but... It's it it feels like um, you know it's not actually us that's causing this. But we have to deal with it. It's our responsibility, and we have to come up with a better solution. It's all very well saying this is it. It's a bitter pill, swallow it. But you, a bitter pill, sometimes you might feel better afterwards. But by crikey, you're not going to feel better after this one so because you've got it again and again. So what's the answer to it? Oh. I'll, well, I'll come up with something. Sure. So I sort of lean towards the conversation about um, club and um, water and wastewater rates. And just a, a few um, observations I've written down. Um, one that I think that's possibly more a long-term team discussion. Two in the past, um, residents have told us they do not want it, even, even the ones that have been the benefactors of it have been saying, no, they don't want to lose control of, of what's local. Um, maybe in one or two years' time, is a better time for discussion because we'll know more about <coughs> whether this is going to be possible. Um, regional or South Island CCO, so and there's also we do not know at this stage whether there is going to be any regional funding or any co investment, and that, that's indicated to be about 18 months away. Um, and to all the other, we really need to be able to identify each um, water supply's true cost. And that, all we're doing by club is really high and what is costing those ones. And maybe if it's not affordable, it's not affordable. And, it's, and that's where it is. The, 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 the individual um, areas can't afford what the true cost is, then really, should we be doing it? Should we be looking at alternatives? Um, clubbing it to um, for the effect of reducing some of the small communities. Um, I think an, another analogy is actually looking at like the Westport ratepayers are having to fund their own flood wall, and this, you know, should that be amalgamated throughout the whole district, which everyone's doing? So it's sort of just, I know that's not our decision, but it's sort of like a similar analogy. Different ones have their own <laughs> costs that they, they face. Um, so that. I mean, well, I think yes, it's worth looking at, but I just don't think the time is quite there. I would, I know I've helped the floor too much, but um, what is the depreciation figure for the one in the row of water scan, please? One moment, caller. The answer to that question is $43,000 23,000, so 43,000. 40, 40, yeah. So what does that equate to, to right now? So. I'm going to call it. Um, it'll be, let me just find, just looking for the number, which is the number of connections. I guess it's um, something Yeah, well, I'll, get, I'll get my learned assistant just to do a calculation for me on that. Can I, this is a wee bit on the fly. Um, if we know that we've got a just under 10% moment in targeted rates, which is predominantly water and wastewater, we know some of the smaller schemes are going up, you know, 25, 30%. Do you want us to have a look and see what the impact if we just locked them in at, say, 10% as a movement, just to see how that would work? In other words, the smaller schemes don't have this sort of income, so it's not such a big issue on the council account itself, but we, we try and help by limiting those moments. Because when you get out a few years, the moments do get the single digits. But the problem there is we don't know what the, the you know the regulations are going to be at that stage. So 
they're, they're buying a bit of time further out, but it is getting pretty horrific. So, you know, I I, 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 don't, I wouldn't want to stand in front of some of these communities going, oh, guess what, it's 25, and next year, guess what it is too. So do we, do I look at that for you? Um, I need, we need can to I do just... That. Can I just caution, though, that some of the issue here is the fact that's exactly what we did uh, last year, pending Three Waters reform, <laughs> and, and and you know it's it's responsible for having to sort of appropriately draw that back. That million odd dollars has quite an effect, doesn't it? What I could do is do the calculation there, Jamie, and just see what it does, because in the smaller scheme, it's not quite the impact as if we did it in sort of a Westport or a um, Reefton program. So. Right. Because I was wondering if it could buy time until we look at the modern areas and little modern areas, maybe standalone community schemes that they can get, give them time to get out of the system. And um, then that's one way of dealing with it because this exorbitant cost is not a one off, it's a continual um, increase on that. Mm. So it's a matter of buying time. Till we look at a um, different solution. Sure. Um, so, just to Douglas's point, if you take if it's 120 rate pairs in the depreciation value, so it works out about $350 per um, household in my mango. I guess the, the question would be if that, if we go away and look at that as to what Douglas, you know, to what Rosalie's point is around buying a bit of time, what schemes is it you would like us to look at? Because you know you've got we talk about smaller schemes, but is it is it a collection of those that have got under one hundred and fifty connections, or how, how do you want us to look at it? If that's something that you're suggesting, there's probably three high ones there. Well, we're not going to So then you look at you've got Punakaiki as well. Yeah. But it's but it's Punakaiki mainly. I don't, I don't know, but I would have thought driving through it's predominantly. Yeah. Economic development argument, or there's still might quite a lot of residential properties on Peter Garden. I thought it was hotels and motels and so forth, but I'm not sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Isn't there a risk? Isn't there a risk here, though, team? If um, if we did that, if some of these small schemes, and I think there's a high possibility here. I agree with Rosalie, and that and that they may transfer to some kind of community trust model or we shut them down or we exit them somehow, I mean, I think that's probably sensible to look at. But if these are running up big debts, how the hell do you exit them then? Who, like, you know, effectively what? You exit them and then they still keep paying a rate for 10 years paying off the accumulated debt that's sitting against them. I just think it's, does that not create another noose and makes it even more complicated to exit good. them? Good point. It's a very good point. You know, we don't really want big overhang. You know, like if, if, if in two years' time or 18 months' time there's some avenue through Tamara Ottawa or whatever, we can we can hand these back to communities or whatever. Uh or using some of the like some of the ideas Rosalie's sharing around uh, you know, um clever ways of treating the water or whatever. Uh then then um yeah, imagine going to Little Wanganoo and saying, Yep, well it's yours, but actually you've still got Half a million dollars of um, of accumulated debt. We're going to claw back for the next ten years. No, I don't think that much. No, I would say it could do. Yeah, no, yeah. but that's why I say do it sooner rather than later mm -hmm. before that debt accumulates too much. So, is there more to discuss around that issue, or we'll? Um, oh, I will. Um, yeah, saying we'll listen to what you said. We'll uh, I'll run. I'll take on those smaller ones. I'll. <laughs> I'll run, I'll run some different options and just see. But but I'm very mindful of what Jamie's saying. I've got to try and work out a bit of a figure which said, well, if we, if just say hypothetically, we held everything 10% in perpetuity, what does that balance do? Because as you say, they, they might end up in a situation where they go into their own little thing, but then they're paying us for the next 10 years to buy our house scheme. I mean, putting something on the living is probably easier though than trying to address it right now. Yeah. yeah. Maybe have a look at that. Yeah, well, well, I mean, we need to do something. We yeah, can't, yeah. can't just sit here and do nothing, unfortunately. Unfortunately, unfortunately so. Right, we'll, we'll have a look at that. Uh, what's the next sort of guidance side? Yeah, right. thank you for that. Right, so we've dealt with that slide. Uh, 
dealt with that side, we've dealt with that one, we dealt with that one, yeah. we dealt with that one that was all about water. Yeah, we discussed that earlier. Put it on there. Yeah. Oh, look at that, we're on to the, wand the wandering road. <laughs> Yes, long and winding road, isn't it? Yeah, so, so what I, 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 I put a slide in so that, you know, it's pretty much the last. What, what we've done, um, <laughs> we're going to have another workshop on the 3rd of April, but we hope to have a draft document with you by the end of next week before Easter. Um, pending no issues. <laughs> but what I was going to say is, I, would, I was quite... I'd be quite looking to understand if there was any questions, if there were anything that wasn't clear, if there was a potential consultation topic that we've not discussed today that you had in your mind, because, you know, we have had a lot of, we've spent a lot of time over the last five or six months around this, and I would just be, be keen to understand if there's anything that you think we've missed, and if there's anything that we can kind of cover off with you today. So hopefully we get, I know we're, we're approaching five o'clock, but we did start 20 minutes late, so forgive even the next 15, 20 minutes or until such time. I would be keen to see if there was any more questions from you. And, and can I just sort of put one to you. We 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 sort of provided the line by line, um, and I know there was criticism that the line by line didn't have any sort of explanation. Well, you know, when you got three thousand lines over ten years, it's a bit hard to try and do that justice too. I got to just have to acknowledge Colin did a, a really good job um, in our view during his line by line analysis, and provided his questions and answers to you. Um, so that was that showed how helpful that process was. Um, uh, and Rosie, I, I hear what you're saying too about this fat. Well, someone's fat and someone's muscle. And so there is always that. And that's what democratically you guys got the difficult job sitting around here. I certainly, and I, I give this to Mike to comment, we have reviewed this budget um, numerous times back and forth. So we have appreciated the feedback and comments, um, but we have dug in, we've, we, we've gone through and we've tested, particularly in infrastructure services with Mike on things like electricity costs whole part of things. So we have really worked pretty diligently to just keep pushing and going. So, you know, I'm pretty happy that we've done the best that we can do. It does come down though, to that muscle fat point at the end of the day. So and that's part of the tension over the uh, water and wastewater rates. So my tuppence worth, I'm not going to say anything more and just welcome any other feedback you've got. I mean, I just want to thank you guys for the work you have done. It doesn't feel to me like we haven't had enough detail. It almost feels with that sometimes too much detail um, you know there's, there's a hell of a lot to read through um, and but you know it's a transparent system I, and I don't think you're giving us anything that we didn't really know and, and it's not an easy discussion I mean setting rates you know above zero um, is going to be a challenge anytime and and it's been well advertised nationally about how difficult it is for, for every council at the moment and we're changing regulations and aging infrastructure um, we either let it fall, fall into complete disrepair or fight the ball collectively. I think it's a very, very valid point, you know. Um, thank you. I think, um, you know, there's, there's always the, the, the morals behind any number you put on that screen in front of anyone, and, and it doesn't, it certainly doesn't bypass any of us, you know. What I can say to you is we've spent a long, long time discussing everything, and like Douglas says, the, the budget. I've seen that budget more times than you know. I wish they, I wish they talk about, it. but yeah, it's, it's it's difficult. But I do appreciate the feedback for sure. Is there anything that's been missed? Up? I know that you said we've got quite a lot of information, but or any is there any consultation topics that you thought we should have? I guess would be the main question because if it's not, we're going down to as far as I believe um, we're looking at solid waste, look, look, working alongside it, and then we've got. Um, what's the other one? I just wonder if there's anything in the roading under the safer roads, because the national just brought out that they're cutting back some of those requirements, um, like around school. So things, the things that we once were going to have to face around to go to safe roads and under take the teams now, get them savings available on that. Yeah, so this is this marginal amount. I mean, it, it wasn't the the core basis or the the, the large weighting no. in our uh, business case. And I think to uh, if we can predict anything, uh, the government will be true to their GPS and their you know following uh, directions, and and uh, we won't get it. We don't have to take it out. We just won't get it. Mm. Um, and you know to that extent. Um, uh, it's probably, I wouldn't expect it to be a large 
um, proportion of our uh, total business case that doesn't um, doesn't make it through on that basis. Um, and and being realistic, we are at risk of not getting funding support for the things we really care about. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the anxiety that infrastructure has is that despite our work and you know <coughs> business case and evidence and all of that, it, there's just not enough money to come around. Um, so we just have to um, I think um, see what flows out, uh, see what the community response is to the question. Um, you know, and ultimately uh, we'll do what council decides to do. Jamie, have you got any questions? Any, any final wise words, sage words? Was that me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so again, my name and those, uh, that introduction in one sentence, uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, yeah. Look, not really. I think it's, I mean, this is always going to be bloody difficult, isn't it? And um, I think you've only got to look at the media every day. There's another council popping up with, um, with these kind of challenges in waters and generally. Um, so we're not alone. Um, you know, we're, we're um, yeah, it's, it's just something we've got to work through um, and we'll hear from our community. Um, I think the only other thing I would say is um, don't, don't, uh, we shouldn't get too hung up on, on one year. Um, don't forget next year as well. So we need to be really careful. We're not just pulling things out that just preloads next year's and we're just having the same discussion again next year, especially if it's capital, it's almost certainly more expensive. So um, yeah. That's, that's my closing words. Cheers. Thanks, uh, thanks, team, for a lot of good discussion. And it is difficult, and it will, will make some of us, all of us, squirm a bit when we're, um, when we're talking to our communities, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Wise words indeed. Um, we'll be able to use that tax cuts to pay for H-rises, so yes. you know, that'll be quite easy. <laughs> yeah. um, as long as you get tax cuts. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if there's no more questions, I guess then you have a steer. Under 20%. Yeah, under 20%. Yeah, well, I mean, well, I mean, you know, as, as there's only so much, you, you know, fat you can skin off anything. Uh, so there's, three, there's three things. We know, we know that the working rector in Westport gives us a gives us sort of a um, headline figure. So we've got that one. We'll look at a bit more of the general rate stuff there, and then we'll just look at see if we can come up with a wee bit of a how do we screw, how do we push some of these, particularly the water ones, out and flatten them a wee bit? Because uh, we have got some big laps we're trying to push them in the next couple of years, so we just need to pull back a bit on those. Um, yeah. But being very mindful that there are deficits that are going to be coming at some stage. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess it's good last thing for me as well to point out there will be a, um, a council paper coming as part of the, the mayor for next week to maybe talk about regional CCO stuff and that will come out as part of the agenda. So you will, that will take that um, information further. Yeah, thank you. Right. right, that must be it. Well, thank you, um, all those people that have watched this live. Um, um, so I appreciate your time. Thank you, Jamie. You can go back and relax. And uh, we'll conclude the meeting at 5.06 p.m. Thanks, everyone.